Pizza time. I don't like sand. It's coarse and it's irritating. And it gets everywhere. Not like here. Here everything is soft. And smooth. Welcome to the Sunday Movie Marathon. I'm Max. I'm Anakin. (laughs) I'm the other one. And this is episode 59. (laughs) 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 Of the Star Wars podcast. Yeah. But we're not doing... I I said sand because it was like the Sandman from Spider-Man. Yeah. No, (laughs) we kind of mentioned this yesterday. Yeah. So it's sand time, baby. It's sand themed one. We've got the Spider-Man's movies to do. We've got the, the other ones. Yeah. The, the yeah. Sam Raimi ones. <laughs> yeah. Not the shit ones. <laughs> How are we all doing? Yeah. <laughs> doing good. <laughs> we should probably point out that we're um recording together again. Yeah, we're together in Together again. Yeah, last week was kind of like a trial. We used Connor's interface and like some of the equipment we used to record in one room together. Mm-hmm. And then I think it went really well, so we decided to just Keep bite doing. the bullet. Oh man, I love that so much. Interface. I went out, I bought my own interface. It was not cheap. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But hopefully, it's, uh, I mean, this is what we wanted to do long term. We wanted yeah. to do, do the podcast in person. This is better. I'm sick of Zoom. I'm sick of our audio Never fucking thinking. up Ooh. every so often. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it all. Take out the middleman, buy an interface. Now hopefully that will never happen again. Yeah, we'd have the the problem where someone speaks and everyone's like in silence because they don't know whether to carry on talking or start talking. Or there's tons of overlap because no one knows when anyone's going to speak. Poor Wi-Fi problems. Poor poor connection. Mostly you, Max, to be honest. Mostly me. (laughs) Mostly on my end. Sorry. (laughs) See, that's the only thing we have to do now. It's just laptop notifications going off. So how are you doing, Max? (laughs) A loaded question, yeah? I'm okay, I think. I was like really fucking not on it earlier in the week. So I'm just like, oh God, couldn't take it anymore. So many things, so much stress going on. And it's December as well. It's like the worst month for it. Worst month for stress is December, I think. We're having like a, a, a pretty bad November, I think, for like everyone I talked to. It was like, oh, November sucks. No, December's worse. <laughs> December is so much worse. <laughs> you got Christmas, you got New Year, you got um, all, all the other stuff <laughs> that happens in, and it's cold and it's always cold and mm. wet. Yeah, it's been raining all week. Oh, it's horrible. The one day that is going to be sunny this week is tomorrow, which happens to be Max's birthday. Hey, yeah, that's not so bad. We cross our fingers. We go into the sea. I in the, can't. In the I, very early hours of the morning. I just can't believe that you're insane. <laughs> you really are. I just feel like it needs to happen. You know, born from the sea, return <laughs> to the sea. I just yeah. hope you don't die. Be all right. I'll bring like a. Coat. I was gonna say because it's really December. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Because we went, we went there all the time in in the old days of summer. It was a nice time, nice trips to the to the ocean. I mean, to be fair, we went into the the beach in what late October, and it was bloody cold then as well. So yeah, but it wasn't really really bad. No, yeah, it was really still kind of warm. Oh, it could still be warm. You no. know, it's just that initial plunge, you know, and you get over it and uh, no. you just kind of <laughs> sit there and you're like, this is not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I'm going to politely that could bow happen. that. You're not going to go in the sea with us, Darcy? 100% you say not. us. I think it's just you. <laughs> you're not going to go in the sea <laughs> You are the only me. one. <laughs> me and me only. I, yeah. I'm excited for it. Good way to start the day, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so, excited for you. Hopefully uphill from there. Yeah, I hope so. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it could it could hardly get worse from like subjecting yourself to like sub zero temperatures yeah. in the in the freezing cold ocean first thing in the morning. Giving yourself possible hypothermia. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, mm, yeah. Maybe I'll just get ill. Like that entire day, I'll just be ill. Yeah. <laughs> actually, Chris said that literally just. I think it was today he mentioned that actually. Yeah. He was yeah. like, "Oh, I can't wait for Max to give himself." hypothermia and then not be able to do anything for the rest of the day i won't lie to you guys it's a possibility yeah. <laughs> of course it is but i i i'm i'm strong 
I can take it. <laughs> I believe in you. I can take the grueling winter. I've survived many of them. As we all have. Yeah. Mm. We saw a movie the other day. That we did. Chris well. and I saw a movie. Darcy <laughs> saw it before us. She went on her own. I did. It was actually... Um, so before I went, I don't really like going to the films by myself because I find it really weird. Like if people go to the films by themselves, I would now like to retract that statement because I actually find it quite amazing. I don't know. There's something about it. You can just kind of chill by yourself. You don't yeah. get judged by anyone either. Like you can just do it's, what the fuck you it's want. It's very peaceful, I think. Yeah. yeah. I bought a VIP ticket. So I just, I actually sat cross legged mm. pretty much the whole film because I was in the leather chairs and you can like, there's a bit more space. Yeah. Yeah. I loved it. It was actually a good experience. It was I like love, four yeah. people there. I love mm. going to the cinema on my own. It's even better, like, you see a movie that's, like, smaller and, like, nobody knows about it. Yeah. So you're there. I mean, I guess it's like a win-lose situation. Like, you want the movie to do well mm. if it's good. But, like, you are there on your own. So it's like you've got the whole place to yourself. Yeah, it felt really cosy. But it was really weird because I was, like, yeah, one of only four people there and I was definitely the youngest person sitting there. And people were kind of looking at me like, what are you doing in here? And I'm like, what are you doing in here? <laughs> Well, it was like the middle of the day on a weekday, right? <laughs> I went on Saturday morning. Right, yeah, nobody's awake then. No, it was like... Actually, it wasn't, it wasn't that early, though. It was like half twelve or something on the Saturday morning. I say morning. Right, that's not morning, is <laughs> Afternoon, it? Afternoon, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bamboozled us. What did, what did we see then? Yeah, we saw Come On, Come On. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did. Come on, come on. Yeah, I actually had a mate message me. Who lives in London, by the way? And he said to me, oh, like, what streaming service did you watch it on? And I was like, I went and saw it in the cinema. <laughs> and he was like, oh, my God, I just thought everything was on streaming services. How was it? And I was like, go and see it. And he went, oh, I will. Cinema still <laughs> exist? Yeah, he was just surprised that it was out in the cinema. I assumed he probably thought the same as like, I don't know. You know, when most small films come out, maybe he thought, oh, it won't go to the cinema. It's not that, mm. that big. You know what I mean? Thought that the cinemas crashed and burned in the in the, in the spring of twenty. <laughs> he probably just thought it wasn't one of those films that was going to go to the cinema, or if it did, it had like a small run, which yeah. eh, kind of true. Yeah, I was surprised it's gotten quite a big release. Yeah, I was surprised too. A two four film, black and white. I mean, it's got Walking Phoenix in it. Gorgeous so film, guess... though. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, mm. I've not heard much. I've not seen much of Mister Rator. I don't think already anything. Mike Mills. Uh, I, I haven't seen anything. What he's done. Yeah, I've heard really good things about 20th Century Women, but I've never seen it. Yeah, no. the film that I get told to watch all the time by other people. They're like, oh, you've seen that one? And I'm like, no. <laughs> you should. <laughs> yeah. So what's the movie about? Uh, it's about Johnny, played by Joaquin Phoenix. He's got to look after this kid. He's his uh, nephew called... Uh, Jesse. Jesse. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love and, that. That's the only thing I remember. Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, you know, uh, Johnny is like an emotionally kind of, uh, it says on Google he's stunted. I don't know stunted, but like he doesn't tend to give much he's away. Stunted. I think he, he kind of, he's quite I think he's introverted. Quite, yeah, reclused he, over there. He's quite reclusive. He doesn't like to give much of himself away, but he's got to, he's basically, he's like this radio journalist. He's got to take care of the kid, uh, his um, sister's uh, son, while she goes away and helps uh, the kid's father uh, sort of going to like hospital for his uh, mental. Yeah, he uh, on stuff. line it says he has bipolar disorder. Yeah, because yeah. there's that bit in the film where it's um. Oh, the bipolar the bears. Bipolar bears. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that like a book? Yeah. There's like a lot of books in this movie. I yeah. love the way they reference books. Like it sounds really stupid. Because it's such a simple thing. But I've never seen it in a film before where they're like reading the book and the book title's just on the screen. I'm like, no. what the fuck? That's so cool. Why does no one do that? Reference a book and tell me what it is. Maybe I'll read it. <laughs> Maybe. I probably won't because I have problems. <laughs> yeah. I thought I found it to be quite like, it's quite small in scale. It's just about this guy who's got to look after a kid. And, like, yeah. <laughs> the plot's simple, like, isn't it? It's just yeah, it's really simple. basic. But it's more about, I guess... The, the the dialogue and the writing and their interactions with each other mm -hmm. and kind of the, the way in which we communicate with children as like people and what we value 
in, I suppose, like relationships with other people. I got a lot out of, I guess, how we talk to people and how we portray ourselves to others. Mm -hmm. The way we can kind of learn from children, the fact that they're not dumb, they're not idiots, you know, they're, they're smart, they're so smart. They see things that we can't see in mm -hmm. different ways that he's like interviewing kids, uh, sort of asking them, what do you think the world's going to be like in such and such year? And all these like different insights you get from these young people who I found to be a really strong backbone for the film overall, because it's not just about his relationship with the kid. It's about like, I suppose just relationships in general, or like, especially young people's relationships with the world that they're growing up in. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I, I, I just kind of thought you were going to start talking to me honest. yeah i thought the exact same i thought you were just oh. <laughs> gonna jump in from there um no i'll let you start it's a great movie it's fucking brilliant Fuck yeah sake. yeah do we love this movie yeah i, fucking I think it. we all oh, yeah. loved it. really yeah. liked it a lot i didn't think I, I didn't know anything going into it no i didn't know anything about it except that walking phoenix was in it and yeah, maybe it was black and white who knows but it was black and white mm -hmm. really good use of black and white mm -hmm. i think <laughs> It, it, let me see I don't know like sometimes it can come off as like really tacky when you choose to go for black and white um, in this day and age sometimes it can be like oh well alright mm. but it, like, it's, it all pops it's all like really well shot lots of like really nice shots of like uh, they go to is it New York they yeah. go to yeah really nice shots of New York that I haven't really seen in this kind of way shot this kind of way in this type of movie before because it's quite held back um and new york's very a very bustly city a lot's going on but it always mm -hmm. felt on this smaller scale it always felt like yeah, it was honing busy, in on this smaller relationship no yeah they don't something i did appreciate is that they don't like when they're in the cities they don't spend the entire time they're there like just showing off all the landmarks and stuff that we've seen in yeah. like every other movie it's very they seem to like show basically like the suburb sort of area the smaller parts of it yeah like all these little parks and stuff like one of my favorite bits is like when they're walking and there's that big like oak tree i don't yeah. know if anyone picked up on that yeah i was like oh my god look at that beautiful tree <laughs> i wasn't even focusing on the film for a couple of seconds i was like wow look at that beautiful tree <laughs> <laughs> yeah something i loved about the usage of black and white is that you kind of get used to it and forget about it it's not something where it's constantly you're being reminded that the film's in black and white it just kind of feels very natural yeah kind of mm -hmm. to be honest i feel like it kind of added more to the film but then at the same time i kind of feel like it, in my personal opinion i felt like it didn't really matter whether it was in black and white or if it was colored it was just i don't i don't i don't, I don't really know if it had much like I liked it in black and white. Because I think it, it's it, like a, a way I can't to explain it. Uh, sort of coincide with the smaller scale that it's going for. Yeah, yeah maybe. Where yeah. You, if you had like so many like colours and like New York's very lively place, you get a lot of like colours from uh, that kind of setting. But because it's all in black and white, you, you kind of like in a way it's quite stripped back. And I felt that's kind of. Uh, emulative of like the themes that it was going for and then the relationships that it was trying to portray i guess for me it kind of um it felt less distracting like this is going to maybe this is going to be something really stupid because it might not happen to other people but like if they're if you're going to a place like you know like new york and they have like all the different colors and like the neon lights and all that other kind of shit i know they don't in this film because they don't really show that kind of parts of new york but i often find that if there's too many colors and too many lights and stuff it gets quite distracting and quite cluttery but with this, there wasn't obviously anything to really distract me. I was just like, cool, there are people here yeah. and there's scenery, but it's not like in my face. Yeah, keeping the colours very minimal, like kind of just makes you focus on the characters rather than what's going on around them. Yeah, I felt like maybe it just wasn't that important to have it in colour, if that makes sense. Like, like, like I said earlier, it probably doesn't really matter either way for me because of like all the stuff that they were trying to show. It wasn't that busy but i liked it though i think it was really it was quite nice to look at like it was just one of those films i was like i like this mm. because it wasn't like yeah it wasn't all in your face it wasn't too distracting it was just like there are people there are <laughs> locations but it's not too cluttered yeah i felt like uh, 
though we were seeing it in black and white, they were seeing it in color, the yeah. characters themselves. So like if it, when there are instances where he loses, he loses the kid and you realize that he's lost the kid exactly when he has lost the kid, mm. but he doesn't know that. And then he has to like run around trying to find him. I felt like it try, kind of drew attention to that. And it, it, I guess it was kind of purposely trying to go for a more detached uh, sense of viewing in terms of like, I don't, I really like the characters, yeah. but I never felt like I was him. It's just like, it's no. like a glimpse into like his life and you see like, it's like a, like how he's doing his interviews mm. with the kids. It's like kind of from that different perspective. I feel like there's a lot to do with like how we view things and people and uh, situations. And it's all about like perspective, like as an overarching theme. Yeah, I think the writing throughout is incredibly good. It's like one of my favorite things about the film is just how well written it is. Like all the dialogue, I think, feels very, very natural. Mm -hmm. I love, um, we spoke about it briefly already how they like bring in a bunch of like poems and like segments from books they kind of like incorporate into the storytelling like the bipolar bears bit where they're like reading this like children's book and it kind of it's like being used as like almost like a narration for the backstory of um the character that they're showing off and i thought all of that stuff was really really smart i've never seen anything like that done before it it does feel like a quite nice a uh, bridging gap like obviously adults and kids see the world in like two different ways because obviously when you're a bit older things happen to you and you learn from those experiences but kids don't necessarily not all the time but they don't necessarily have that and when you have a book like a kid's book but an adult's reading it, it i feel like it's like a good bridging gap of like how kids interpret things and how adults um have to interpret them to get kids to understand that kind of thing because like mental illness and stuff is like quite a serious like subject, and how old Jesse is meant to be like nine or yeah. something? Like it must be quite a difficult thing to try and get your head around, and then trying to tell that to someone who's barely even double digits, not even yeah. double digits. You know what I mean? And I like the fact that they do make him a very realistic child character. That like he does understand like roughly what his dad's going mm -hmm. through. Like maybe he doesn't completely get it, but he like he knows what's happening and i feel like in a lot of movies they just kind of make this kid this like really like blissful sort of person who like mm -hmm. idolizes his dad and thinks he's perfect and thinks his mum's like the bad guy for protecting them um but he, he does feel like a real kid yeah he was genuinely fantastic what's his name woody something uh his name it's, is i'm pretty sure it's woody something Ga no yeah woody norman Oh my god. Do you know what? He'll probably never ever listen to this. <laughs> but if he ever does, he's quite possibly the best child actor I've ever seen in any film ever. Yeah, he's great. Is he actually nine years old in real life as well? I think so. I don't care about looking this up, Darcy. <laughs> I know, but I just I just want him to know. <laughs> I don't know. Either way, he is absolutely astonishing. Like, I mean, I know obviously you can say like most you know, like actors are, are good because, you know, that's kind of what they do and a lot of them are great. But when you're younger, oh my God. If it, to me, I feel like it's more of an achievement if you're a great child actor. Yeah. He gets the character down very like yeah. well. You know? <laughs> and it's like obnoxious kid. Mm. He's just like, maybe he's, he doesn't see things in the way that we'd see them as adults. Mm. But like, I always appreciated the fact that we saw things from his side and it always made sense to how he was thinking. Mm -hmm. And it always, it, it was interesting to see the dynamic between Jesse and uh, Johnny coming from like two different, literally two different places, but also from this huge age gap where like none of them, neither of them came off as like stupid, but they all both came across as though they could learn something from each other yeah. and that they needed something th from this relationship that yeah. they could give to each other. I think that's one of the things that I liked a lot about this film as well, but like how I, I can't really explain it very well, but how like, I think at a younger age, I think adults should be like treating kids as if they're like small adults, if that makes sense. Well, not like, yeah. not in the way that like, 
they should have like adult jobs and you know like you know like proper responsibilities but i feel like you should be able to talk to your kids in a more transparent way other than like you know when you kind of like what's moddy cod you know you, Coddle. that's the one i don't think it's worth doing that kind of thing to them because i feel like it kind of stunts them but in this film i feel like there's a lot of like healthy expressions of emotions going on and some and i was and do you know what basically i was just crying throughout the whole film because i was like Sometimes I wish that if I had that kind of thing growing up, I felt like maybe I would have been a bit less stunted in how like I express myself. But I'm not blaming anyone for that. I just think that this is a good like model to to go on. Like I feel like people should take on that kind of mm. thing. It's like a learning process. Yeah, they, they're saying like the movie that there's no handbook for being a parent. Yeah, yeah. There's no like we're just making this shit up as we go along. Mm -hmm. It's like a day by day thing. I think we're all learning as we go along. There isn't like a handbook for like being a parent. Mm. Um, I can't really imagine it. There's like that part where uh, <clears throat> Johnny like calls his sister and he's like, "I'm exhausted. I don't. I I, I can't do this." And she's <laughs> like, "She's like, you have no idea how hard it is." She's like, "She's he's my son." Yeah, <laughs> like, like she does do that every, every day. day. <laughs> I actually thought for a couple couple of minutes that he was like they were going to find out they had like ADHD or something because he was like the most off the charts kid, isn't he? Yeah. Like he doesn't shut the fuck up. I think up. he probably does, but they don't explicitly mm -hmm. say it. No. It just... I don't think they need to though. No, 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 no. no definitely no. not. It's not the point of the film. It's like this idea of like interacting with the child. It, they're all different. You know, we're all, as people, we're all different. Interacting with one person is going to be a completely different experience than acting, uh, interacting with somebody else, uh, especially if like you don't really know them. Like, I don't, I didn't really get the, the feeling that they knew each other all that well. It's like this introduction almost, or like a reintroduction, because like, when you're younger, you don't really remember people. And then when you grow up and like you meet them again, maybe there's some part of you that understand who they are but like it is kind of like a reintroduction yeah because don't they say that um in the beginning of the film that they haven't seen him in about a year or two and to be yeah. honest a year or two at that age is quite a long time not to like remember or to forget something or maybe not for adults because when they get to a certain age they kind of like level out in like their kind of person but when you're a kid you change so quickly all the time that i feel like johnny's meeting like a brand new child like he's yeah. got the same name, but he's not the same kid. You also like perceive time differently when you're a kid. It yeah. goes a lot slower, I think. When you're an adult, I think. Just speaking from personal experience, you just go so quick. It does, doesn't yeah. it? It's scary. I don't like it. <laughs> I want to get off. It goes quicker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was another thing that made me really sad. Like you know, at the end when he's talking about how Jesse's more than likely not going to remember anything that yeah. was happening. And that killed me a little bit. I'm not going to lie. I was like, ah, oh, shit. Because it's true. I true, mean, though. Maybe, and maybe it's not even from his perspective or whatever, but like, for me personally, I don't remember half of the people that I met when I was young. Do we do we review? No. no you know, people, okay, cool. people come and go when, when you're yeah, that yeah, yeah. age. You know, parents or your guardians, they have friends or like different family members who come in and out. Sometimes you don't, see people for years on end um people go away people come back and they look different or like they sound different <clears throat> yeah it's very it's quite it's, it's hard being a kid i think you have to deal with all this i think that this movie kind of highlights the the struggle of being a child mm. in the like i think it's quite interesting to see how seriously uh jesse is taken by uh, johnny yeah i think because a lot of people would just kind of brush it away there were a lot of things that like when i was a kid I just didn't get told or like they were explained badly and it didn't matter because i was a kid i think a lot of what i get from this movie is kind of how i see my own relationships with my family or my friends my parents definitely i saw a lot from like i kind of juxtapose my own childhood experiences with the th the themes and the uh happenings that go on in this movie as well yeah i completely agree and it also kind of exposes this idea that just because you you grow up it doesn't mean that you understand more 
because yeah. you yeah. here you've got Jesse who's quite uh, a, a big personality he speaks his mind he's got like a million things racing through his head at once he's always talking but then you've got <clears throat> Johnny who's significantly older but he's very introverted he doesn't want to talk about his life he's got like a uh, an ex-wife who he's still in love with he doesn't like talking about her especially not to a kid who's not going to understand any of that but like it, it doesn't matter because Jesse still wants to know about that and he still wants to know about his uncle and his his own life he wants the best for him, I think. Yeah, it's a very sweet relationship they portray throughout the movie. It's mm. very, very wholesome to watch. Yeah, yeah, I love them. Love is all we have, guys. Yeah. Mm. From the movie. Just like relationships and um, like it's never too late to s- start that kind of relationship with maybe family members you don't talk to or like uh, friends you've not seen in a while. It's never too late to either start or rekindle those relationships. Yeah. Yeah. I don't appreciate when people are like, Oh, I haven't spoken to them in years. So I'm not going to talk to them now because it's awkward. And I'm like, who cares? Like mm. I've actually had people in my life before who I'll, um, I'll go. Uh, so I have friends now that I'll go and see and friends that I haven't spoken to in a long time. And a lot of them think that I don't like them anymore because I haven't spoken to them. But it's not really like that. And I've never understood that. It's just life. Yeah, it's, it's just life. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, like I appreciate because, you know, like we all get busy, don't we? Like that's just yeah. how life is. And it's not me saying that I don't like anyone anymore. I just happen to, we both have lives that, that just aren't compatible. Like it's hard enough doing this podcast <laughs> <laughs> once a week. and We see each other all the time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just one of them. Like s- the schedules just don't align. But there's no there's no like foul play here, you know what I mean? No, if we didn't do this podcast, Darcy would ghost us, <laughs> <laughs> including me. Yeah, when we live together. I'll never see Chris again. <laughs> Who's Max? I don't know who he is. <laughs> Keeping this relationship together. <laughs> this podcast Very is podcast. the glue. <laughs> I love the music in the film. There's a lot of like really beautiful usages mm-hmm. of like atmospheric, like ambient music and stuff throughout, which I really liked. Um, there's a great usage of the song Strange by Wire, which is one of my favourite songs, so I really appreciated that. I was waiting for you to bring nice. that up, because <laughs> yeah. you brought it up and I went, I don't remember what song you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, when I started playing, I actually had like goosebumps, because I was like, oh fuck, this is like a great usage. See, I was yeah. just crying all the way through, so all I could hear was the soundtrack of my own tears. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't hear anything else. It was a very interesting score, I think, very unique, and it kind of, it, it, uh, it went like hand in hand with... The, the more calm uh, sense that the film brought, it was quite uh, meditative, I yeah. felt. You just kind of sat there and you took it all in. And uh, afterwards, I was like, I, I honestly don't know. Like, I know I loved it, but like, at the same time, it's like, I have no idea like, what I really thought about it like, in, in, in terms of like, detail, because I was just kind of consumed by it. Oh, I was just, yeah. I was thinking about the film the whole way through the film, which is really weird because I don't normally have those kind of thoughts about films. Mm-hmm. Like everyone, everyone knows that I don't take notes. I don't, I don't really think about a film. I just kind of point blank and shoot, so to speak. <laughs> but like, I don't know, this film just had me thinking the whole way through the film, like no, like no film's ever done before. Yeah. No, I was kind of like you, Max. I was just completely consumed by the movie. I was also kind of drifting off a bit, but like not in a bad way. It's like, oh, this kind of relates to this thing in my life. And I got thinking about just stuff that's happened to me in the past. Yeah. And I actually it's did that like a little bit It's not like a detriment to the film to at all. Honest. It's just like how, how I kind of used what it was telling me to kind of process things that uh, have happened to me or like I have, have gone through in life. Yeah, I guess that, that's what makes this film so relatable is that you can relate to a little bit of Jesse and a little bit of Johnny at the same time, which I feel like is quite a nice, a nice thing for a film to do because I've always wanted to relate mm. to more than one person at a time. Yeah. I remember throughout just thinking about how similar to Jesse I was when I was that age. Uh, mm. Maybe. All I remember was just being really loud, but then when I was like four years old, I was tested for autism anyway, so... <laughs> Yeah. It just just goes hand in hand. Me with, uh, too. <laughs> Were you? Th- yeah. Not that young, but I was. Oh. It's because I, I used to sit under tables and shit. It's an interesting film to watch with people, possibly who are of different age ranges. Like, I would have loved to have watched that with, like, my mum or my dad. 
or um, like a a younger cousin or something and see what they got out of it. Um, I think there's a lot. I, I kind of felt for both of the characters, yeah. but it's because yeah. I'm sort of in that age range, like I'm in my mid twenties now, and it's like I I understand the the trials and tribulations of being very young and not being understood or having information kept from you or th- th- being told things you know don't quite understand but sort of have a grasp on, but mm. also that juxtapose with like the more adult side of the 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 film where i understood where he was coming from i uh, understood where johnny was coming from and like i was i was uh, like mad when the kid ran away i was like you idiot why did you do that you yeah. shouldn't have done that um but then also like i ran i i i've run away before yeah. we fucking yeah, run like- away you know this this is what kids <laughs> do but i so i kind of got it's like two sides of the coin almost yeah it feels like a unique situation because yeah you are young enough to understand it but also old enough to be like, God damn, if my kid <laughs> ran away from me, I'd beat them. That kind of thing. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> or maybe not to that degree, guys. Don't. He was a bit of a don't shit. Call me. He, <laughs> he was, but I feel like he, in my eyes, I feel like it was kind of justified because he's been thrown into the situation that he doesn't quite understand. And he feels like, especially when he was like talking about like, oh, you're just going to send me back to my mum. My mum's going to be sad and I don't want to be with my mum because she's sad. My dad's not there. And I was like, I kind of feel for him because he's literally just being past pillar to post. And not for like not for any reason of like, um like it's not his mum's fault and it's not his dad's fault. And it's not even Johnny's fault. It's just like this situation that he's just been thrown into. And I feel for him. But then I feel for them as well because they're dealing with actual like adult things that are happening. And mm. I don't know, it's just one of, it's just one of them things where I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> I also appreciated that it wasn't really sold in the end. It's just no, like one of those, it's just like life. It's just these things that happen in life and you've got to roll with the punches. I like that though. I like the fact that it wasn't one of those films that like ended like really happy or anything because I mm. feel like that's not really how real, yeah, it's not how real life is. And it's like, um, this is just a snippet of what Jesse's life is and what Johnny's life is and what uh, the woman's life is and the yeah. dad. I don't remember any of their names, <laughs> so I'm I'm whispering them. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of preferred that because I feel like it's really tacky and cheesy to be like, oh, these are snippets of our lives. But it ends all happy. I mean, there was kind of like a happy ending to it, you know, where um, yeah. his dad gets um, put on release for... Yeah, he gets the help he needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I feel like there are like good things about it, but it's also like, yeah, it's not tacky in any way. I feel like it's quite nicely not solved, but it was it was quite satisfying for me. Like normally, I like to be (laughs) to have a satisfied. Mm. (laughs) Yeah. Should we get on to ratings? Yeah, we've We've been been talking about this for a while. Yeah. What are we going to rate this out of? Um. Um. Interviews. Cool. Sure thing. Yeah, there's just a really beautiful, powerful movie. Um, really great acting, great writing, looks beautiful. Just probably my favourite film of the year, I think. It overtook um Titan for me. I'm gonna give it ten interviews out of ten. Really, really love this movie. Also like just kind of sitting through the credits and the credits roll and you hear all these different interviews with kids. No, it's saying what what the future is going to be like, what they think the future is going to be like. It's very optimistic mm. in that way. Um, really loved it. I would see it again. Um, probably give it for now. I'll give it a nine interviews out of ten. I, I think it's like a movie that everybody needs to watch. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of glad that you guys sat through the credits as well. I personally sat through the credits because I was too awkward to be the only one out of four to move first. So I just sat there. And I just watched and I listened to it and I was like, I could get up, but I'm not going to get yeah, up. Yeah, I was also trying to mm. stop crying, so. <laughs> oh, I just I just let it happen. I just, I cried even as I was leaving and this poor woman wanted to clean the <laughs> clean the screen and I was like, I'm leaving now. Give me a minute. Um, <laughs> that was me after doomed. You, uh, to be I'm, I'm, <laughs> Chris stole my line because it is 100% the best film for me this year. 100% film. 2021 and i'm gonna give it 10 interviews out of 10 
Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's that? Now we get on to the Marvels. Wow, we have been... Wow. Okay. Um, so for you who yeah. didn't know, <laughs> Sam Raimi did some Spider-Man movies back in the day, in the early 2000s, and they were the pinnacle of superhero movies forever. <laughs> and, ever um, and ever. It's, it's Spider-Man 1, Spider-Man 2, and Spider-Man 3, Dawn of Justice. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away, Chris. <laughs> yeah, so the first film we watched was the... The, the yeah what my brain is just died <laughs> it, uh, uh, <laughs> i know exactly what i was gonna say and my brain just just, just <laughs> shut down um we watched spider-man from 2002 the film is about peter parker who is a young high school student who gets bitten by a genetically engineered spider and he basically takes up this role of Spider-Man, a superhero, who um, tries to stop this bad guy called the Green Goblin. Um, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, I thought you were going to say the Grinch. <laughs> yeah. The Grinch is in this <laughs> He's <movie>. there. <laughs> well, he is also green, so that does kind of work. Yeah. The Green Grinch. Um, yeah. We all saw these movies when we were kids, I take it. Yes. Yeah, over and over again. I had it on VHS as a kid. Okay, I definitely didn't watch it over and over again. But yeah, this was like one of my favourite films no, growing up. This and the second movie. I have seen it at least a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I can watch it like a couple of times. I remember playing like the <laughs> Spider-Man 2 game on it. Um, yeah. Was it PS3 or something? PS2? Yeah, that's the game with the pizza time music. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so <right>. good. <laughs> oh, I never got, I never got that far because I didn't have a console. But I did yeah. beg my dad to buy me the Spider-Man graphic novel that they made after the film came out. And I still have that somewhere to this day. Oh, nice. Yeah, I've I've seen this movie more times than I can count. Like when we were re-watching it, I like... I bet you were quoting it in your head. <laughs> at some points I was, but mm. pretty much all of it I knew like inside out. It's kind of the same with the second movie as well, because I, I watched it like five or six years ago and just memorized the whole thing. And it's bloody good as well. This is it, it's really fun. Like, it's, yeah, it's a really good movie. Um, I think I'm of the opinion that I like this the most in the trilogy. This is probably my favorite. Although, what I, I did, I watched these like a couple of years ago, so like they're still pretty fresh. Yeah. Um, I think m- maybe they're like on level footing this and the second one, but maybe mm. I like this a little bit more. I like I like seeing the origin, you know, and yeah. I've seen like all the setup. I think. It's super fucking goofy and <laughs> stupid, goofy. but like that's the kind of thing that Sam Raimi does really well. Yeah, there's a lot of like, <laughs> just like skull jump scares, like it, like flash skulls and skeletons on the screen. It was like, very like when the goblins going crazy, like the little flashbacks like gave me like dark man like yeah. vibes where like it was just like random well, images and shit like just yeah. put on a screen. I really appreciate <laughs> that. Like, I, I feel like a lot of like comic book movies now try to be just like comic books are nowadays, like ultra serious and dark. But this kind of it goes back to yeah. like the original Spider-Man comics from like the fifties and sixties, the ones that Sam Raimi probably read as a kid that were very silly and goofy and over the top and pretty stupid. Yeah, that's... and he just kind of like completely embraces that tone and tries to adapt that. And I think it really works in the film's favour. Yeah, I kind of appreciate the fact that it's not, it doesn't take itself too seriously. Like, it's not goofy-goofy, like, to the point where it's, like, really bad. It's It kind of... It can, it can balance itself out. And I feel like... I don't, I don't really like superhero films anyway, but there was always something about Spider-Man that I always really, really liked. But it might be because it was goofy, but it might also be because... I just thought it was like genuinely an enjoyable experience, if that makes sense. Like when I'm younger as well, I kind of I didn't really take to any of those kind of films, if that if that sort of makes sense. Like I never was really into like X Men or no, I wasn't whatever. really into anything apart from Spider Man and Batman. Yeah, I mean, well, maybe not even Batman, but I do appreciate this film for the kind of like balance that it has. Like it's yeah. kind of fun, but it's also like. Semi serious. It's not a straight up comedy or anything. No, 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 no. I think it takes itself seriously. It's not like the kind of movie to say, like, this is dumb, isn't it? This is stupid. Like a lot of other movies could do and just go, like, yeah, this is lame. This is shit and lame. 
this is a Spider-Man movie, who cares? And just make it terrible. But <laughs> I mean, they actually, have done like, that. <laughs> yeah, it actually takes itself pretty seriously within its own world. Um, and I don't... Um, so like with Tobey Maguire being like the titular character, I think he works very well for these movies. I mean, the yeah. debate is up for like, is he the best Spider-Man? Oh, let's not do this. Um, let's not no. do this. <laughs> Not for me, but um, I like him in these movies. Yeah. But I wouldn't want to see him in like the MCU movies, really. Doing yeah, because it's like I, a, a it's a world away in terms of its tone. Yeah, I don't know how he. Yeah, I don't know how he would cope in, like, because obviously, yeah, like Chris was saying, they're like super, super serious now, and I feel like Tobey Maguire's not quite there when it comes yeah. to that kind mm. of thing. Got so I feel like he'd be out of place, wouldn't it? Got all his stupid faces he keeps making. <laughs> Yeah, almost, it kind of almost feels like a comic relief in a weird kind of way, but obviously not in a he is super goofy kind of way, but it might just be his natural face expressions that just make him really yeah. goofy. I think out of all the Spider-Man, like all the people who've played him in live action ones, he's the least comic book accurate. I have heard that many mm. a time. That um, Was it uh, Tom Holland's the most accurate? Yeah, I'd say Tom Holland. He's probably my favourite live action Spider-Man. Obviously, I prefer these movies to the Tom Holland ones, but it, Tom Holland's the one that I like the most because he's the closest to the comics, I think. I, d I, I always did think that Tom Maguire was a little bit... I almost want to say he's too old to be Spider-Man. Not like in terms of old, old, but I feel like isn't, isn't Spider-Man meant to be like, like a 13 teenager. or something? Yeah. yeah. I just felt like he was a bit old for like it. 17, 18. Tom Maguire was just too old, mate. Like... I he the only thing, and I love these films, but the only thing is just I didn't think it was very believable that any of them were meant to be teenagers. Yeah, no, I like so. like you got <laughs> the people the in the high school like that bully who like is obviously like thirty. Yeah, yeah. like I just no. <laughs> You're like a teacher that looks exactly the same age <laughs> yeah. as everyone else. I think that's one of the things that, and this isn't even a gripe for Spider Man. I think this happens in a lot of American films where they hire people who are like twenty five to play sixteen year olds, <laughs> and it just doesn't work. It's That's like, my only um, gripe, though, really. That was that video of like Steve Buscemi with like a snapback on. He's like, yeah, <laughs> got a skateboard. In his end. Yeah, it's from um, not another teen movie. Yeah, yeah, that, it's that, like that. That, that. Yeah, that feels accurate, though, doesn't it? Like that is actually how it feels. <laughs> it's kind of stupidly unrealistic in that way. Like, why? Yeah. Why are they going to like this spider museum? Are I they just... going to a spider? Well, what lesson are they taking? They need to go to a spider museum. <laughs> I don't even know spider museums were even a thing. Or it's like they go, they take, <laughs> they take them to like this lab. It just like there are a bunch of spiders there. What are you doing a, 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 an essay on? Just spiders? Yeah, like and it, and it's never really explained either. They're just, I mean, it, 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 why would they explain it? It's not convenient to the plot, is it? Really, it's just like yes. They study this thing that no one knows what they study, and they go to this spider thing, and <gasps> one of the spiders mm. is missing. You would have thought once you heard that a spider was missing, they would have told everyone to get out. Nah, she just Health says, oh, uh, probably rife, using it. Mate. Probably using it for some shit. <laughs> and they just go, go along. I like that it could have been like anyone who got bitten by that spider as well. Yeah. Which is not like a thing that they go into in these movies, but like with Spider-Verse, I think they, there's like a heavy emphasis on like, yeah, anyone can be Spider-Man. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. It, could been, it could have been anyone. It happened to be this guy. Tobey Maguire, aka Peter he Parker. Just, he just happened to be standing there when the spider came down beside <clears> her, you know? And it's so cool. The spider looks awesome. Yeah, it like, does. goes onto his hand, it bites him, and you see, like, this, the inside of his body, just like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, like, going through his body, and all the blood's, like, popping around. Oh, it's so cool. Yeah, it's like a scene from a horror movie. It yeah. actually, it actually like, the way feels, feels like, like especially it. Especially when it? he's like back at home and he's like looks really ill. Yeah, he's like, like sweating. Yeah, yeah, falling on the floor and like his DNA inside his body is changing. I mean, it's that horrifying. is kind of terrifying yeah. if you think yeah. about it. Like, obviously what he becomes isn't that terrifying, but the transformation itself must be quite, quite grueling, isn't it? Because your whole like molecular level is like... Spidery, yeah, yeah, it's all spidery. Then he gets up and he's super ripped, and he's just like, okay, yeah, he doesn't <laughs> like, need glasses anymore. No. Yeah, like one of the one of the things that did kind of gross me out was like, yeah, you know that bit where um he finds out he's got like little tiny hairs on him. Oh yeah, and he's, yeah. Ugh, and he's like, 
prickly. Like little hairs on his fingers. Yeah, it's fucking horrible. <laughs> That was the only bit that really got me going, ooh. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, apart from, you know, the fact that he can produce webs. And then I made the yeah. mistake of looking oh, up yeah. how spiders make their webs. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't look it up. That is weird how he <laughs> produces webs. Like, where does that actually come from? Well, no, we already looked this up. And, you know, it's apparently... Not from spiders, from him. Oh, yeah, no, that's... Well, like, I know normally in the comics, it's like a... Is it like has a like a... or something? In the comics, he has like a actual like machine that does it oh, on okay. him. Like it's yeah. not actually coming from his body. I don't like that it comes out of his wrist. Yeah, no, yeah. it's weird. It looks really weird. It looks disgusting. It actually looks very <laughs> gross. <laughs> it looks very um, bodily fluid like. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. It's not appealing. It's like. Like cum. <laughs> oh right, he said it. Yes, it looks very. Let's cummy. just stop beating around the bush. Yeah. It's like <laughs> it's all like yeah, it comes out of his wrists. It's and, like yeah, it squirts it's out. Disgusting. It's long stream. And then, yeah, and then when you figure out that like spiders make it like near that sort of area as well, you kind of think, hmm, that could be spider cum. It's what he's using. <laughs> it's very strong. <laughs> <laughs> mm. It's the strongest of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because yeah. then it kind of makes you think about how, like, um, how much weight um, a web can actually handle. Because how I don't know, well, I don't know how much Bunch of wire actually weighs, but apparently it's quite powerful. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think with with Willem Dafoe in this movie, he's uh, great. playing Green Goblin, he's probably like the best villain in this series. He I would agree. Yeah, yeah, I do. I like Doc Ock. You know, yeah, but like. Willem Dafoe brings like such a presence to the character. I think like I wouldn't want to see anybody else play him really ever. Um, yeah, in live action, it's just come on such a presence. He's like he is like the best actor in this movie. Yeah, I feel like I'm glad that you brought that bit up because I feel like if you watch his performance amongst um. Is it Kirsten Dunst and um, yeah. James Franco? God, doesn't he piss all over them? <laughs> them two. I don't like them in the in this franchise whatsoever. No. I just think the characters are bland and they suck. I, and this is yeah. nothing about their acting at all because they've actually been good in other films, but I just hate them in yeah. these films. Hate Willem them. Dafoe is a million times better than, um, I think it's Dane DeHaan who plays Green Goblin in Amazing <laughs> Spider-Man 2. Oh, I, I didn't know that was a thing, but... <laughs> R.I.P. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to watch those movies. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> um, I'm not going to watch them either. I originally wanted to watch them because Andrew Garfield was in them and I kind of like him. But um, I, don't. I decided against it because I feel like it would be a betrayal <laughs> to my love of Spider-Man. <laughs> a betrayal to yourself. <laughs> True. I have been told that they are really bad. But yeah, I've, I loved the character. Um, What's his name? Norman. Norman Osborn. Norman Osborn. Yeah. Oh, he's he's like a really great character. Mm -hmm. Like you genuinely do care about him. You feel bad for him. He's like this very conflicted person where he's still like in his body, but he keeps basically being taken over by the Green Goblin. By the Goblin Juice. Yeah, he sh shoots him up. So. <laughs> I like that. Shoot me up with that Goblin Juice. The Goblin Juice yeah. that turns into the Goblin Mist. That, yeah. uh... <laughs> Why are they doing this for him? I don't know. They go into the goblin incubator and shoot me up with the goblin juice. Yes. <laughs> and then he got <laughs> fucked up. You really, was it like he went into the incubator and like he he had nothing he had he had taken his shirt off and like he didn't have like like that ECG type stickers on him, but like when he got in there, it, they were on him. Yeah, that I think that's just some um just continuity uh, error. <laughs> yes, a sweet little error that the film made that was actually quite funny to laugh about because yeah. we were like, Oh, when did they happen? <laughs> just like randomly there. Back to formula. Um, kind of just makes you think about all the goofy things in this film, yeah. to be honest. That scene where he like transforms in the incubator terrified me as a kid. It's creepy stuff. Honestly. It's genuinely quite terrifying. But I, I, I don't um I wish we saw a kind of like Green Goblin flash thing that um, Spider-Man had. I kind of wish that had a thing. Or maybe it didn't. I didn't pay attention. What? What? 
Like, oh, you know, do you yeah, mean you know, how like his like DNA the, Yeah, changes. I wanted oh, to see right. something like that. Yeah. But with like green instead it's of blue. Really necessary. <laughs> no. You see it once, you don't need to see it again. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I thought it might have been cool to see the juice turn into the mist, turn into the molecular shit. Nah, you see him go crazy. He just goes back to formula, you fucking prick. And then he throws the guy across the room. I do kind of like, that, that, that bit is actually like the scariest bit is where he, he thinks he's dead and then his yeah. eyes just open like and he just zooms into yeah. his eyes. Yeah, <laughs> so freaks fucking me horrible. out. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> fucking, yeah. <laughs> I don't think you could get anybody else to play Green Goblin, really. I don't think anyone else would do it well. well. He's got that, that face to him. He's got the, 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 the piercing eyes. The face. Come at you. Yeah, he just, he kind of looks like he was born to play a, a villain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nothing against the guy. He's great, and, you know. As... That's actually what they do. They look at him and they go, ah, oh, here's the villain of our next movie. Mm-hmm. On the polar opposite end, I do think James Franco fucking sucks. Though. So does Kirsten yeah. Dunst, and I do not but, like care more about than that. Kirsten Dunst. Like oh, her yeah, yeah, kind of put her to the wayside. But, I don't think Kirsten Dunst is that bad. No, but James uh, Franco is really bad. right. Okay, but and I just want to, I just want to sort of ask this question because I might have slightly brought it up yesterday, but I'm not sure if I worded it properly. Do you think it's James Franco that sucks? Yes. Or Harry Osborne that sucks? James Franco, both. both. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's a bad character and a bad actor. Ouch. <laughs> if you hear this, James Franco, which you won't, ouch. Who cares? No, I don't I don't really get really anything from his character. I think his whole f- feud in like the later movies is based on nothing. It's Absolutely like he's nothing. completely irrelevant to the story. And he's supposed to be like Peter's best friend, but I never believe it. No, I I have absolutely like no grounds to believe that they are best friends in any way. Like there's, you know what I mean? Like there's little evidence. Oh, they went to a museum once and they talked to each other. Oh, leave him alone. Oh, that makes him his best friend. Like, what yeah. the fuck? They randomly start living together at one point. I did Which is like never that. built up to. It's just like, you think that he's living with Aunt May still. And then like he talks to... um mj and it's like yeah i really I, did I live with harry that. now because we because me and max were like oh did we like skip past something and it's just yeah, like no something just... had gone wrong with the yeah. blue <laughs> and it was just like oh it just happens to no, skip it just like jumped yeah, yeah it, it does that a couple weird. times throughout the movie it just like skips over really important information <laughs> and you're just like what the fuck guess this is what we're doing now right yeah, yeah i guess it is oh <laughs> do you know what whatever in it <laughs> it's not that important that they mm. live together to be honest no not really I like the character of Uncle Ben though he doesn't get like much yeah. to do but like no. he commands a very powerful presence and I think he kind of he's the basis for like a lot of Peter's morals when it comes to how he mm-hmm. how he uses Spider-Man for good and you know he's got like a lot of revenge in his heart after Uncle Ben dies mm-hmm. and um seeking revenge for this guy and he kind of he lets this guy die basically which is not something you kind of equate with spider-man he's yeah. you know he's the good guy and like even if he hates you you'll still like he won't kill you and like i feel like that was kind of like a turning point it was a great kind of setup when you saw him like get uh in the ring with this guy and then he wins and then he was supposed to get like a bunch of money and then they didn't pay him. And so he just lets this guy steal the money and run away. But that ends with Uncle Ben dying. And that's kind of like a catalyst for, I think, the character as a whole. I feel like that's, that's also a good, uh, like a good example of how like your consequences have actions, especially mm. if you act very irrationally well, about something. Your actions something. have consequences, yeah. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when will you learn, Peter? He will never <laughs> learn. Obviously, the the fantastic line, which I think still holds up, is like, with great power comes great responsibility. That's like what Spider Man is all about. I'm telling you, that line has been, it's it's like the most quoted thing I've ever heard. Like, Mm -hmm. I hear everyone say it. Like, whenever someone brings up Spider Man, it's like the first thing people do. Yeah, it's like a line that's synonymous with the character. Yeah. I mean, it is true. It is very accurate to who he is. He doesn't, he's he, become. Yeah, 
He didn't choose this spider yeah, no, life. Yeah, he's got to come to he's grips gotta, with the fact that this is his life yeah. now. He is a man with, <laughs> with great, great power and with great, great power responsibility. And responsibility yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> and that's exactly what it is, and I kind of, I kind of like that. I actually, well, I love Spider Man. <laughs> he's a great hero. Yeah, he is. He's like, I think, even like with the the MCU movies that are coming out now, I think he's like one of the best ones that they've done in terms of the character. Um, it's like one of the only ones that I'm now willing to actually see anymore. Like the rest of them, I just don't care about. Yeah. Oh, I've I always felt that way. There's like a, a nature to that character that pulls people in. He's very grounded in that sense because he comes from like, he's not a god and he's not like a, mm. he doesn't drive a big truck or whatever, whatever the fuck Iron Man does. You know, he's just a guy yeah. and he's trying to be better and he fucks up a lot. But yeah, it's kind of. I think it, I think he's probably, with the character comes like a lot of flaws yeah, within like, his own person. I would say he's kind of relatable in a way. Like obviously, none of us have like been bitten by some like godly fucking creature and become like a superhero or anything. But I feel like it's very, I don't know, it's very on on brand for like the human experience. Like you know, things happen to you, and then you got to like you know overcome them, adapt, that kind of thing. You got to be a hero. Got to be a good person in the end. Mm. Overcome all these obstacles. And that's why they play Hero by Nickelback at the end. Yeah. It was a great song. Do you know what? <laughs> Normally I'd shit all over Nickelback, but I actually had this song on a CD and I had it on repeat, along with another song that was in the first film by someone called Anna Something. And I had that song on CD as well, and I just repeated it over and over and over again. Good soundtrack. I actually love. <laughs> I actually love this film. Yeah, mm -hmm. Got there's some like good a nostalgia, like a part where like MJ and Harry start dating. What the fuck was that about? Yeah. Why do they, they? Why were, do they like each other? They were a terrible couple, yeah, by the way. Terrible no one together. Go... Well, there was no not really any purpose. No, yeah. no they start dating. Either. If if they actually were dating, like what? What? Why does she not like him? <laughs> She like avoids his kiss. Yeah, like, like is, when they're on the balcony. I think is there. I'm not gonna say it was like plot convenient because obviously, like, um, Peter and MJ were like friends. So, like, I don't think it was because they obviously wanted to keep her in the story. But then, what is the explanation? I don't understand what the point is. Is it because there's meant to be some sort of rivalry between, um, Harry and Peter in like? the later films i don't get it i don't understand the the need for it i don't know if anyone can explain it to me or if there's like i don't a, think there is any need for it I just, I just don't get it It just didn't need to happen and yeah it was so pointless because she didn't even like him anyway <laughs> i didn't get it another character i really like that we've not brought up yet is um j jane jonah jameson played by jk simmons oh my god why haven't we brought him yeah. up yet <laughs> he's hilarious in this we? movie he's the perfect person to play that role and i'm super glad that they um brought him back to play him in the mcu movies because he's just like great what is he in the new one yeah he was in um far from home oh my he's, god yeah he's in like the post credit scene he is like, dare I say, the only correct choice to play that character. Yeah. He's so good. He's fantastic. And I think is that he comes out with like some of the funniest lines yeah. as well. Yeah. Even in the third movie, he's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, the one I, shining light in there. Yeah, because he's like <laughs> he's always consistent. That's what I like about his character, is that no mm. matter what what I don't know, even if it's Spider Man Three, he's still the fucking funniest thing about the yeah. films. I'll send you a nice box of Christmas meat, best I can do. <laughs> <laughs> Slander has spoken, print its libel. Like it's so good, man. Yeah. It's so good. Like even when like the Green Goblin comes for him, he's like he actually protects Peter. He's like, I don't know who took the pictures. Yeah. It was like that's good journalism, man. It's like a private source. You're not allowed yeah. to do that kind of thing. <laughs> well, you get fined. I love that he sticks. He <laughs> sticks to his guns. He knows journalism yeah. and he does it well. <laughs> I love the um the action all throughout. I think it's really, really well choreographed and directed. Although a lot of the CGI is not aged well at all, I think because it, most of it is practical, it all holds up really well and looks great still. Yeah, I won't mm. get too much into it, but it definitely looks better than Spider Man Three. I think yeah. even like the, <laughs> the, the like the web swinging through New York looks 
kind of fake, but like at the same time, it doesn't look bad. Yeah, you know, I, I still believe it's happening within the universe. I really like all all of that. It's like a part where Green Goblin comes to the uh, the the fair, the, the the festival they've got going on. It was like the music in that is like the most early 2000s shit ever. <laughs> yeah, you've got, yeah, like, got Gabrielle's yeah, in there. Yeah, performance from Gabrielle's stand in there. Literally, it did feel very 2000s, didn't it? It was kind yeah. of gross. He comes in on his glider. He's like, ah, ha, 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 ha. That fucking iconic laugh. I so good. should have been the Green Goblin. When like the he like throws the grenades at like the balcony and the balcony like cracks that's like it's it looks it's definitely all practical all that happening it looks so good and you just reminded me when the when it goes off and everyone turns into like skeleton dust oh fuck yeah (laughs) oh that's crazy (laughs) that was like some indiana jones shit that He like does that earlier in the movie as well when he like blows up that army compound. Yeah, he just kills all of them. It's I so had that cool. great transition where it's like an explosion and it like turns into like the graduation cap yeah. flying. Oh yeah, that oh, was sick, brilliant. To be fair, so funny. I there really, are so, yeah. <laughs> I really like like the design of the grenades as well. The green goblin yeah. grenades are so cool. They are really nice. They kind of don't look like your typical grenade type explosion devices either. They kind of look a bit like Pokemon balls or something. <laughs> it just looks really weird. Yeah. They look like the sticky grenades from Halo. They do as well. Yeah. Iconic stuff. As is the upside down kiss, which we all know and love. Yeah. Oh, the iconic That's like, upside down kiss. If they did that nowadays, I'd be like, fuck off. <laughs> but it's so good. It's really, it's a really great moment, I think. It, I think it works for the... for the. I don't know. It's, it just works, doesn't it? I feel like... It was like an iconic moment, though, innit? Like, ev- everyone goes, Oh, you want to kiss an upside down like Spider Man? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, they did it. They fucking yeah. did. Speaking of iconic, great music. One of my favorite, like, superhero scores, I think, in this movie. Uh, Just, like, really, really well composed stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Is it Danny Elfman? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think track. he did all of them, didn't he? No. Oh, he did didn't he do the third one. <laughs> Well, no, they used mm, some of his music for the film. Let's not do that. <laughs> yeah. He, yeah, he's really, he's a bloody talent, that guy. He, he, he literally can do no wrong, to be honest. I think he's working with like Trent Reznor now. Oh, oh yeah. what yeah. a geezer. I love Trent Reznor. Yeah, I, really, I love the music, man. It's like, I'm so bored of like a lot of these Marvel movies nowadays with the they subpar sound... dull soundtracks. Yeah. Don't you think they sound very stocky? Like <coughs> they, they do. Just, they just mm. took a copyright-free dramatic noise. Yeah, that... none of them. <laughs> none of them have like a distinct theme where like you remember like that sound. Like you think of that movie, you think of that song. Yeah. Like, Avengers is the only one I can think of recently that's had that. But I feel mm. like this film, it kind of does. Yeah, even Avengers, it's like. I can't think of anything from the Avengers. If, 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 if that they one made thing. four movies then, and used that same thing, that same theme, you wouldn't know it <laughs> from like the first no. one. Honestly, I'm trying to like remember like any of the music in any of those movies. No, I, but I then can't. I don't, I don't normally pay attention, but if you guys can't even think of it, then that must be pretty It's always bad. kind of boring. I don't know. Yeah. I just don't take to that kind of thing because a lot of it, yeah, a lot of it just sounds the same. It's like supposed to be like really dramatic. So it's just all like ding. And it's like, oh, here we go again. I don't know. It just doesn't, I don't really care. Mm-hmm. I like the um, part of the end where Peter decides not to be with Mary Jane. It's like a nice sort of cap to his. I mean, it gets fucked up later, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's uh, like, yeah, I. I uh, I don't need you. Or like he feels oh, like... Oh, he didn't have to do it the way he yeah. did. Although, I don't know. He is kind of like, I can't fuck you. My enemies would come for you. And that means I couldn't. No, but I mean like, um, I don't know. I felt like he could have been a bit... I don't know. Yeah, actually, maybe. I don't know. How, how, I don't <laughs> know like, how you... Yeah, nah. how you would you handle that? I don't no, know, thanks, but... babe. Peace out. And then he leaves her uh, the And she's just crying of, at the grave. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I totally understand it. I feel like it is within his character to be like, I don't want her getting hurt, so therefore it can't happen. It makes sense. And it's, it does. I it think it is sense. a good, like, emotional like arc to the movie. Yeah. Where he's wanted her this whole film, but, like, actually having her could 
lead to her losing her life. And I feel like he doesn't really feel that way up until she gets, doesn't she get like stolen by the Green Goblin? Yeah, but she always gets stolen. So it's like, wh- wh- why what not? What difference doesn't you know, make? She yeah. always, she, in each of these movies, she gets taken hostage. So like, what does it matter if you're not with her or with her? It does. Like, he's not that sad about Aunt May, is he? She, she gets fucking tossed around in the second movie. Yeah, that is true. He's not trying to distance herself from her. No, but I think he figures that out quite quickly. Well, I say quite quickly. It took like another movie for him to figure that out, but he still figures it out in the end. He's like, oh shit, don't make a difference. <laughs> May as well. Did you think that, like, when he was hiding from Norman when he got home and, like, the blood dripped on the floor, like, a one yeah. blood drip, you think he could have heard that <laughs> realistically? No. He like, turns around, he's like, what? That was, was that? possibly the most dramatic falling of one yeah. drop of blood I've ever seen. And it was on a car, wasn't it on a carpet as well? Like, you wouldn't hear that, would you? No. Like, maybe, maybe on a hardwood. Mm-hmm. See, not hardwood ceiling, hardwood flooring, maybe. But even then, what's he got? Supersonic hearing? Mm. We must do the goblin the hearing. <laughs> He's got the goblin ears. Well, they probably have very good ears. I don't know. I've never spoken to a goblin before. Mm. <laughs> I think that whole final confrontation with Green Goblin and Spider Man is fucking cool. Yeah, like, it's all the action in this movie is so cool. And yeah. like that final confrontation where they're just like having it out in like this like abandoned building. It's all really good stunt work and th- uh, the, the way he like gets gutted at the end he like gets impaled by his own glider it's yeah. so cool i like i like when you see um he's talking to him he's like oh peter um you know we could be best mates and all this kind of stuff and then you just see this glider just wake up buddies you know <laughs> and then please help it? me like, he gets his spidey senses and he's like, there's yeah. a thing behind me, so I'm going to move. And then he's like, ah, nah, I've impaled myself. Don't tell Harry. Yeah. <laughs> and well, then no yeah. one tells Harry for multiple movies. <laughs> it's like a really good use of editing as well. I think just the way that was all handled. Yeah. But don't tell Harry. I'd just be like, fuck you. <laughs> you try to kill me. Why shouldn't I? <laughs> You're dead. You won't know. Yeah. But he's, he doesn't tell Harry. Oh, okay, I'll keep your secret, Norman. Yeah. You're my, you're my good was, buddy now. I'm sworn to secrecy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't really help you out, though, does it, mate? <laughs> it just ends up with Harry hating Spider-Man. One day, Spider-Man will pay. Okay, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything else that anyone wants to mention? Um, yeah, I want to bring up the suit design. It's probably my favourite Spider-Man suit. Yeah, really, really love it. It's far better than the Iron Spider in the Spider-Man movies at the moment, which just the sucks. The Iron, the Iron Spider. spider. Yeah, that I have suck. no idea what the Iron Spider is. Um, it's like Tony Stark made Peter Parker. Should a I look it up? Spider-Man suit. Yeah, but it's made out of like the Iron Man I was going to say, stuff. you've seen um, Infinity War, but you yeah. probably don't remember it I wouldn't remember. <sighs> Did you just see it, did you? <laughs> no. Um, no she doesn't have I don't have Wi-Fi, apparently, oh, right. so I can't okay. see it. I literally typed in S- Iron Spider Suit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not good. It. I, I agree. This is like my favorite Spider-Man suit. Like The whole time I was like, this is cool. But I was also like, Peter is I like d- a student on like a shoestring budget. How is he affording yeah, like, the, 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 this, like the, the materials yeah. to make this suit over and over How again. is he like an How's incredible he... fashion designer yeah. as well? Literally, how does he do any He's of so it? Do good. you do textiles I, at school? Why isn't he in fashion? Also, yeah. this is ugly as fuck. It's fun. awful. I hate the it. Iron um, spider. The only, yeah. thi- the only thing that really bugs my eyes is, oh, it kind of happens here as well. Bugs? In certain lights, I know, I didn't mean to say bugs. <laughs> um, the suit looks black instead of blue. Yeah. But that's the only, that's the only thing. I understand it's because it's like navy, but that did kind of annoy me a little bit when I'd be watching it and I'm like, why is it black now? And it's, like, it's not black. It's just I loved was that um, the PS4 Spider Man game they made. They made the suit from the this trilogy like a downloadable thing, so you can have Spider Man wearing that suit. That that's suit how is I so played nice it. to look at as well. Like it's it's um it's a weird thing for me, but visually you can see all like the textures of the suit, and I'm yeah. like, oh, that's so nice. Especially like, um, oh, and the other only grab that I have is, for some weird reason, once he puts his little um, mask on, his whole suit becomes one. Why yeah, is that? that? Really why weird. is that a thing? Mm. <laughs> why, why does it look like that? So, <laughs> it's there was unrealistic. Like one scene in this movie that I absolutely hated. It was like where MJ and Peter are just talking 
and like this is post MJ being saved by Spider Man, and she's just like asking him, "Did uh, so you take pictures of Spider Man? Did he mention me at all?" Oh yeah, my god! Uh, do you know what? I, for me, I it didn't suck as much as it made me cringe. I felt so mm. awkward. No, Max had his bloody really head bad. in his hands. Yeah, it's really bad. It was horrible. It was like. Ah, like, this doesn't feel like it someone. exists. No, it no, should no. exist in this movie. <laughs> yeah, I actually think most of the scenes where it's just Peter and MJ talking are not good. No. Oh, that one was the worst though. Like that actually made me physically cringe. Like I just wanted to leave. I just, if I was Mary Jane, I would want to leave my body. Do you know what I mean? It was just like mm. a horrible experience. And imagine trying to film that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I love when he goes into the. Is it when he goes into the burning building and like Green Goblin is like Norman's just like screaming like a woman? Like how yeah. did he get his voice just to, just to sound like that? Do you know what? That was sick. Yeah. I'm not even gonna laugh. That was like, so how did you cool do though, that? That was another bit that freaked me out as a kid. Yeah. I, I don't like blame to, you. That I is like terrifying. I think that Willem Dafoe almost definitely did that scream himself as well. I bet he yeah. did. No, he didn't. I bet he did. No, come on. It was so know. like I, it, it was so shrill. In a way that I don't feel like he could do it. Mm. I don't know. I w- in in my little naive heart of hearts, I'm gonna believe it was a very not feminine true, shriek he did it. to me. I'm gonna believe that he did it. Yeah. Even if he didn't, <laughs> just to keep the magic alive, He's I'll, like, I'll yeah. believe it. Trying to recruit Spider Man. He's like, are you are you in? Or are you are you out, Spider Man? Like, it's voice... you who's out, Gobby. Out of your mind. His voice like... was actually hilarious in this film. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> not for any reason other than it was just like really jarring. <laughs> Do we want to go on to ratings? Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Go on. Do it out of Gobbies. 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 Not even yeah. goblins. Yeah, I I love this movie still. I think it's probably the best superhero origin movie. Just like has a really great character arc throughout. It's really well written. Like hits all the emotional beats in these two. Really great action. Just kind of for me, it's kind of brought down by a lot of scenes that aren't really needed. Like all the stuff we talked about with MJ and Peter talking in an incredibly awkward way and. Just the fact that the film just constantly like skips important things. That's like kind of brings the film down, but I'd still give it eight gobbies out of ten. It's still <laughs> a great movie. Yeah. This is like my favourite Spider Man movie after Spider Verse. Um and two is like slightly lagging, but like honestly not much. Um I love it, man. I would I would watch it like really soon again. It's like an endlessly rewatchable movie. It's so enjoyable. And it's like, it's what superhero movies should be. It's, you know, kind of a little bit schlocky, but it's ultimately a lot of fun. I give it an eight gobbies out of ten. I feel like it's just, it's just a classic, isn't it? For the longest time, this was the staple of superhero films. It was like, this is what they should be like. Kind of goofy, kind of serious. And they should all have Tobey Maguire in them. I'm just saying. Um, I'd give it an eight gobbies out of ten. Awesome. Next we got Spider-Man 2, directed by Sam Raimi. This came out two years later, 2004. It's about Spider-Man again, and <laughs> Doc Ock, and Spider-Man's Peter Parker in this one also, and he's going through an identity crisis. He's like, oh man, nothing's going right for me. You can't even get a piece of food at a dinner party. And um, he kind of decides to... This is all about like him stopping being Spider Man. He's like, ah, fuck this. I got too much going on. Stop being Spider Man, and things are do not go his way at all, unfortunately. And uh, the big villain is obviously Doctor Octopus, played by Alfred yeah. Molina. He's in this, and it's all about those guys just going at it. And Doc Ock's like, I gotta get some the the money for the, to make this huge sun so I can make the world energy efficient or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, he wants to gather some interesting material, but I can't remember what it's called. It's like some stuff. Yeah, yeah he's like, ah, oh, only 25 grams of it exist in the whole world. And for some reason, Oscorp have it. Like they just, they, how much money do they actually have if they own this 
rare bit of material that only they have and it's they just... keep it in the safe in the bedroom like what the fuck <laughs> great security I would yeah say. just like how um mr Krabs keeps all his money under his mattress yeah it's just so mm. stupid it is very like that yeah <laughs> it's um, very spongebob-esque <laughs> i do i i i really like this film i i would say it's kind of for me um sort of on par with the first one like mm. just as enjoyable i'd say just as good not my favourite film in the world, but I liked it a lot. I love this movie so, so much. It's like probably my top one in my top three favourite superhero movies, along with Spider-Verse and Dark Knight. Like I can watch this over and over again and never get sick of it. I just think it's I think it improves upon pretty much every flaw I have with the original movie. It's still not a perfect movie by any means, but I just get so sucked into the universe in this movie and just have such a great time watching it. Yeah, it's it's really enjoyable. That's what I like about these films. Yeah, just a bunch of fun. A bunch of fun watching Spider-Man go around and shooting his webs at people. Oh man, it's so <laughs> much fun. Yeah, I really like this too. I think it's... um. <laughs> It is up there in terms of superhero movies. I don't usually like watch a superhero movie and I'm like, wow, that was like so much fun. But this is so much fun, you know, and it is it's not aged poorly at all. It all looks really good. You know, yeah. the effects look really great. A lot of practical effects still being used here. I, th- I was worried that the arms for Doc Ock were going to look pretty bad, but they still look really good. They do. Uh, they really do. I mean, when it comes to most um, like CGI from... The early two thousands. Yeah, back in your, I do, <laughs> I do often think whether it's going to look really bad or all right, and it's held up quite nicely. Yeah, I would well, say. the yeah. arms were practical. Do you yeah. know what I was thinking that the second I said it, I went, I bet they're practical. Yeah. <laughs> There's obviously the CGI in there, but I think most of it does hold up really well. Like it's it is kind of dated, but nothing that looks like flat out bad like there's never a point where i'm like oh god that looks awful no i think you have yeah i think it's one of those things that you have to kind of take with a pinch of salt because let's be honest it was 2000 yeah. 2004 mm-hmm. yeah it's 2004 let's be honest like it's only going to be as good as 2004 will let it if that makes sense like you kind of have to be a bit forgiven i don't know i think it still holds up no yeah i'm not saying that it doesn't like, i'm just saying you do have to be a little bit forgiven with sure, the time sure. i would say yeah, it just shows how like far we've come. Yeah, yeah, in all that time. You no, know? for it to still be like really entertaining, and not I've never really taken out the story by anything that looks bad. Or, no, like, any anything that's a bit too clunky. I think it's all quite neat in terms mm-hmm. of the presentation. I do think it's still quite silly, but stupid and schlocky in in in, in terms of that. Yeah, you know, maybe in the same way that the first one yeah. was. Maybe honestly. even more so in maybe. some instances. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it all works. You know. Because it's going for that silly, fun, comic book kind of feel. Yeah. yeah. I think that's one thing I appreciate about it the most is that it is consistent, at least. Like, if you're going to make the first one kind of goofy and serious, the second one's got to be goofy and serious, right? Yeah, it does definitely try to be a little bit more dark, a little darker and more serious in some instances, but never to the point where it just completely loses the tone and fun that the first movie had. I feel... I feel like the second one kind of goes for the more like the there's more meat to it, isn't there? Because you've got to develop more on the story there's, of Spider Man, I suppose. The stakes are a lot higher. Yeah, this that's one. kind of what I mean, kind of. This one goes into, I think, more about Peter as a character. Yeah. And also what it means to be Spider Man. Mm. I think it kind of tackles themes of like, uh, I think there's like actually like a Christ allegory for a lot of it. It's. Mm. It's like they keep saying, like, God bless you, Peter. God bless you, Peter Parker. He's like in the cross position when he's on the front of this train. He's like saving and protecting humanity. What, like he's a he's like their savior? Yeah, that whole train sequence basically does that. Mm-hmm. Like where he gets like knocked out and like all the people are like carrying him through the train and protect him and like refuse to let Green Goblin pass. Oh my god! Do you know what? Mm, I never thought about Hawk. that before. Yeah, that's what I mean. The Green Goblin. He's. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I didn't even pick up that you even said that. To be honest, <laughs> I was just like, "Ooh, okay." <laughs> yeah, it's really. Good. I always like the uh, the integration of like the people of New York in these movies. I think yeah. that's something that the, the newer movies don't really get right. I think in the first movie, you had like 
they were throwing like stuff at Green Goblin when he was uh, harassing Spider Man, and and then this they're like protecting Spider Man on the train from mm. Doc Ock. I I really like that because it's something that would obviously happen if there were like superheroes in real life. You'd want people to get involved with it. Whereas I don't think I think that the new ones kind of missed the mark mm. on that. Yeah, definitely. I feel like that's also something that people would genuinely do. Like, if they were like, oh, we got yeah. your back, Spider-Man, because you protect us. So yeah. if there's a bad guy, we're going to throw five guys at him. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I feel like that is something that people would actually do as well. He's their bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think the development on um, Peter Parker as a character adds a lot more emotional weight to the movie. Mm. Um I think a lot of the characters throughout are really well developed. And I think what I actually like more in this movie than like the grand action is actually like the scenes of drama throughout the characters. Like I think my favorite, favorite scene and probably the whole series is the scene where um, like our May's moving and packing all her boxes and like Peter Park goes to like talk to her and they have like this really great conversation. Do you know what? Like, I love that bit. my favorite scene. Especially when she's talking about, like, because he's given up being Spider-Man and that little kid's like, oh, when's Spider-Man coming back? And he's like, oh, I don't know. And you get that feeling that Aunt May obviously, like, knows that he's Spider-Man because she's kind of like, oh, he's gone, has he? Well, he needs a hero and he's like 10 and, you know, Mm. like, I mean, I'm not explaining that very well, but she did, like, that was my favorite part of that film was where she was like, oh, normal people can be like heroes, you need. I don't know, like he needs to come back and do the thing that he was doing because you've got to sacrifice. I don't know, I don't know. You know, it was good. good. Yeah, I think my favorite scene was like when Peter has to explain to Aunt May that like he feels responsible for Uncle Ben's death. That was such a heartbreaking scene where they just like sat down there. It's all dialogue. It's really good acting. Where he's saying like, "Yeah, I I I lied, and then I, uh, I, I I." and then that have caused her Uncle Ben dying, and I feel like that was my mm. fault. And she doesn't say anything to him. She just gets up and leaves. She's left, just like heartbroken. It's such a heartbreaking scene. It's I don't I don't know about you guys, but I often get like movie plots and stuff confused in my head. But for the longest time, I thought that Aunt May was like held a grudge against it. If that makes sense, like kind of like not like kind of brushed it under the carpet and like kind of didn't talk about it, but was like really passive aggressive to him. But then mm-hmm. I just saw, I was watching the film and I was like, oh, she actually doesn't do that. She's actually quite, quite forgiving about it. And yeah. She's well, quite she's obviously about very, it. very obsessed about it. Yeah. But... I'm, I don't know where I got that plot from. I just mm. fucking forced it out of my ass and I was like, oh, okay. But I, I preferred the way it happened in the film because I feel like it was very much to her character that she's very much like, he wouldn't want us to be angry. He wouldn't want us to be at war with each other, mm. that kind of thing, because yeah. she seems very... They, like, them three as characters, like Uncle Ben, Aunt May, and Peter Parker, have, like, that moral compass that is, like, really strong, and it's, like, almost validated in these films, where it's like, you wouldn't do that, so don't do that. Mm. And it's like, oh, yeah. Be good people. <laughs> I'm James H. Mm. <laughs> There's a lot of, like stuff in this that I kind of don't care for and that's mostly to do with like the relationship between Harry and Peter and MJ and yeah. this kind of love triangle oh, they try yeah, to push. These guys again. I don't think it's uh, <laughs> it's very entertaining at all. I think it's quite dull. I think, you know, MJ she, she's I, she's not the best, you know, she's not the best character in these movies and she's like got a boyfriend now, she's got a fiance, she's marrying John, the astronaut. She's like Kisses him upside down like the Spider-Man kiss. Ooh, spicy. <laughs> Trying to recapture that sp- Spider-Man kiss you had in the first one. You know? Should we have a f- you freak. <laughs> you know, sorry, you just reminded me about how much I hate MJ in this film, especially. As- ooh, especially. <laughs> yeah, it's those three that, like, that, the, their stories together that, like, that's like probably my only oh my issue yeah. with the movie. Do you think it they're just, trying like, really to make them like a power trio? Yeah. I, what, like this just weird doesn't incestuous happen. trio? Or like, you know how Star Wars kind of captured that thing oh. and like made it a thing with the uh, Han Solo yeah, that's layer definitely and what they're trying to go for. I didn't think it worked at mm, all. It and doesn't work. Oh, on, oh, honestly, that MJ. I think for me, I just, just what solidified my hatred of her was when she like left John on on her mm. own bloody wedding day when she knew she didn't even 
fucking like him from the beginning. Oh, do you know what? I'm not even going to get into this. There's like a part where she tells Peter to kiss her. Like, you, 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 you just kiss anyone, will you? Why don't you? <laughs> She's a whore. <laughs> <laughs> just do whatever you want. She really pissed me off in this film. She was literally unredeemable from this point onwards. Like, after that, I was like, I don't care about you. Yeah. I wanted her to get stolen and killed, to be honest. I didn't care about I her at like all. Their entire, like, relationship between Peter and MJ, especially in this movie, is, like, it's really, really repetitive and frustrating mm. to watch. Mm. It's just a lot of the same sort of scenes happening over and mm. over again, and it just isn't interesting. And you know why he, he, you know he likes her, but you don't know why he likes her. No. She's like, I've loved you since I was a child, MJ. Don't you remember <laughs> that? When we were kids together at school and I, I loved you. It's like, okay. It's been like this forever. Don't question it. It's, but they don't back it up. With yeah, yeah. They never explain an anything actual, about it, do they? The, the chemistry is not there. I don't feel it. I don't feel like they like each other. I mean, I can sort Something of I feel sen- those new movies do a, a lot better, I think. Yeah. Oh, I mean, an, I, yeah, I can't, I can't MJ really. In the new movie. Yeah, I can't really back that up because I've only seen the first new one. Yeah, and she was in it, but their yeah, she relationship wasn't in it, a wasn't lot. In it yeah. at all. Yeah, I didn't really. I can't back this up. So mm. maybe I'll watch them. I think I should watch them. Maybe <laughs> you say watch them. There's only one you've not watched. Oh shit! There's only two. Yeah, well, yeah. this is the third one that's coming. Oh, I out. felt like there's been like three or four no because he's in so many yeah no, I, think, I think that's the problem isn't it like i'm getting to the point Spider-Man where Spider-Man so and the infinity war yeah you got like civil war as well yeah, yeah okay i'm just getting myself confused that's all it is yeah okay. far from homes is the only other oh, maybe I should watch done. It. okay fair enough that's on me that's my <laughs> own fault this is what i mean about the mcu just confusing the ever-living <laughs> shit out of me there's just, just a lot you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> I do like the villain in this movie. I love yeah, Doc Ock cool. as a character. Yeah. I really like the way Alfred Molina portrays uh, what's his face, Otto. Otto um, Octavius, is it? Otto Octavius, yeah. He's got the uh, the the evil chip in him that makes the, the arms control him. Mm, the evil chip. <laughs> the way he like um, it, the, the, those like it's like this thing that like slots into his spine. Yeah, and the way they did that was so cool but it, it was like it, oh yeah it made it was, me it was like body horror no it wasn't body horror but it was like it was horrible oh, God, it was like it, it was cringy when like the needle stabbed into his spine yeah to, to allow him to use the arms it was, it was horrible. so cool it was very yeah. horrible he's my favorite villain out of the three movies mm-hmm. i think he's really great i love <laughs> alfred Melina, he's you, a great actor. You I like just chat about how much you love Sandman. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I like the conflict. I do he... like Sandman. He's not my favorite <laughs> yeah. one though. I, I like the conflict he has with the arms. You know, yeah. it's like they're making him evil. You've got the inhibitor chip that's smacked out of it. And he's like, oh man, I can't help it, man. The, I, the, it's the it's the arms, man. They're making me wear these sunglasses inside and go go everywhere and steal a bunch of money. Even though he seems like he's having a bunch of fun doing it. Yeah, yeah. He's he's, like... ne- he's never like crying as it happens. Like he's he's like <laughs> really sorry. tormented. Yeah. yeah, he does in the beginning, but then yeah, like once he starts mm. like going, I need Spider Man. It's like oh. Okay, you like this now. Yeah. He's yeah. like robbing a bank yeah. <laughs> so conveniently, the one that Peter is also in. <laughs> but yeah, I think he is um, <laughs> like the definitive Doc Ock. Like, I don't think anyone else could play this character. Yeah, oh, I don't know. I find I it hard disagree. to imagine, but I think someone could play him. Yeah, I kind of disagree, honestly, because I don't... I don't know. He's who. a fine character. He's a fine. He's a good villain. But in terms of like character, I don't know if I got like so much from him... In, in terms of his performance, because he's not really, it's mostly the arms. <laughs> I'm gravitating I'm not going to lie, it is, it is, it's like, mostly ha-ha, arms. He's like, look at me, Spider-Man. He takes off his sunglasses, like, it's me. It's like, I don't know that it, nobody else could do that kind of thing. Do you, you know? know what, that was one of my um, weird issues with it, was like, why is he wearing sunglasses so much? Like, I don't understand. Because like, it's cool. Yeah, like, he wasn't even like... It makes him cool. <laughs> It was sunny outside. His octopuses. What, even when he was wearing them at night to go to James Franco, or well, sorry, Ari's house, yeah. and go, hey, I would like some of your tritarium or whatever the fuck it's called. Tritium. Tritium, there you go. 
Yeah. What did he need sunglasses? No, no, he fucking did. Maybe he's got an eye disorder and he can't look at the light. Does he watch a nature documentary once in a while? All right, they're all wearing them down the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> the octopus. All the octopi. All the octopi. <laughs> they're all down there. Yeah, that's actually what that Beatles song "Octopus's Garden" is all about. It's all about, about Doc Ock and how he wears sunglasses. Yeah. Okay. It's what that documentary My Octopus Teach was all about. <laughs> it's about this guy who like goes into the ocean every day to see this octopus just to make him wear sunglasses. <laughs> all right. Watch more documentaries, guys. <laughs> the arm's killing the surgeons, though. Yeah, I was actually about to bring that up. Oh, that was horror. Yeah, it's just like horrible. a straight up horror. <laughs> yeah, scene. What, what is cool. this rated? Is it a PG? It's a PG. PG. Fuck off. Yeah, the other two are twelves, but this is a PG. I don't know how <laughs> so that happens. Cool. <laughs> this is when you know that, like, the census board or whatever mm. have gotten really strict because that would not fly in today's standards for a PG, no. I don't feel like. No. No, you, you know, even, like, uh, with, with Doc Ock smoking a cigar, fat cigar, like you wouldn't get that in a Marvel MCU movie, I don't no, think, nowadays. No, they would be told to cut that shit yeah. out. But, like, the, the, the scene where, like, he's going, ha- the, the arms are going ham on the surgeons, it's, like... It is horror stuff, it and it's like scary. there's so much to do with like Sam Raimi's own style and what it, what he brings forward from like his previous movies, like Evil Dead or like Dark Man. You know, um, it's like that point where like the arms are like dragging that one woman across yeah. the floor, and like a nails are like going into the floor. It's horrifying. Yeah, it's really fucked up. <laughs> but it's like really well directed. Yeah, yeah. It's all super, like, the lighting in that is like, the, the lights are going all around. It's so yeah. cool. The camera's just fucking going, man. I really, really love yeah, it. It's one of the best bits in the whole film. Pretty much all the action in this is really good. Honestly, yeah. it's really well choreographed. The fight on, like, the, the side of the building. That's all so cool. With, like, uh, May, Aunt May, like, flying about. She's, like, had this to, like, protect Spider-Man in one instance. So, like... Like smacks him across the head. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so cool. Car umbrella. Mm. Yeah, I think the the action sequences are definitely like a lot larger and grander in scale than in the previous movie. But I think Sam Raimi's style still comes across really well. It still looks very Raimi esque, and I think it fits really well. That's something I hope he brings to that Doctor Strange movie yeah. he's directing. I hope they give him a bit more free reign, a bit more personality to inject into the movie because he can do it you know he's proven himself <clears throat> even with like Spider-Man 3 yeah it's not that good but like he made it still and there's still like parts of that movie to enjoy I think he could do it he's like he's just such a fantastic director even like Drag Me to Hell I don't really like that much but like his style comes through you know he's yeah I'm always up for basically anything he's doing something I love about him that I think he shows off really really well in this movie is how he is able to put in these like gigantic tonal shifts in his movies and it never feel like clunky or out of place. Mm-hmm. I think that works really, really well in this film where you've got like really dark, like serious moments where like characters are like really upset and then suddenly all like cut to something like super silly and over mm-hmm. the top. Like Peter will jump off of a building, he's like, I'm back, guys. Yeah. And it'll fall straight flat on his face. Yeah. I like that though. I felt like it yeah. kind of breaks apart a movie that's kind of semi serious, if that makes sense. Like, I don't know. I feel like there's always need for movies to do that. And then I feel like in these like new Marvel films and stuff, I feel like they do it, but it's kind of not funny yeah. or it doesn't work. There's no pizza time moment in any of those other Marvel <laughs> pizza movies. Pizza time. <laughs> there's, there's none of that. It's so like unique and. Um, it's just it's so of these movies to do that kind of thing and i can't yeah. get that from any other superhero movie experience yeah. you've also got that great scene where peter like gives up being spider-man and he's just like strolling through the streets while um raindrops fall yeah. on my head's playing and he's like smiling having a great time i thought you're gonna talk about that terrible lady on the violin who starts singing and i was like yeah. that's me she's I like always her. in him doing the spider-man music yeah i he like was cool yeah, I liked her. Yeah. <laughs> Harry still sucks in this. Yeah. And oh. Franco's still terrible. I... Like, he gets saved by Spider-Man, and like, the instant he gets out, he's like, oh, he humiliated me by touching me. I just don't like his character. Like, his character just sucks. He's just a... 
He's, a he's whiny just a whingy baby. Little, oh my god, I was literally just about to say he's a whingy little baby. Why is he so annoying in this film? Honestly, him and MJ, like, I just can't stand him. <laughs> my father's dead. I got a bunch of money. Let's do this. <laughs> he's still just such a like. He's such a baby the entire time. He's like, oh, dude, you have he no has, like, basis no re- for hating Spider Man. If you, he said like, <laughs> oh yeah, I found Spider Man with my father's body. Like, what? No, you didn't. <laughs> what? Did, what did he stay there? Did no, Peter just, just stay there with his father's body and go like, hey, Harry. It's me. His mask was torn to shit. His mask, his, you could see that it was um, Peter after his confrontation with the Green Goblin yeah. in that last mm. movie. Of course you didn't find Spider-Man with your, with your father. You have no reason to believe that he killed him <laughs> with his own glider. Yeah, I, I can't even get into it because it's just so annoying. Like, he was so annoying. I just wanted to, like, grab him and, like, shake him or slap mm. him. One, two. It's just Annoying as fuck. It's not my favourite part of the movie. <laughs> no. <laughs> that being said, you know. <laughs> also, I don't know why, like, Dark Ark decides to, like, steal money from the bank and he's like, I, uh, here are some coins, some coins in these bags in the bank so I can buy the parts I need for my s- sun machine. But dude, if, you, if you're going to go out of your way to steal some shit, why don't you steal the actual parts that you needed <laughs> for the machine? Actually, that is a good point. I didn't even think about that before. But no, but it didn't. Well, oh. How are you gonna? How are you gonna? How are you gonna buy expensive tech with coins? Yeah, here's my massive bag of coins I got from the, uh, with the, with the with a bank logo on it. It's like what? Nobody's going to accept that. You can't go into a store and do that. It's a, it's a good yeah, it's a good point actually. Banks also don't have big bags of gold coins out back. No, they don't. no, no. Yeah. <laughs> that's so it's stupid. It's just one of those silly things. Yeah, it's more like comic bookie. Yeah, <laughs> I just feel like it didn't need to happen. No, but I guess because it's comic booky, I guess I can kind of accept it. But it's just dumb. <laughs> yeah. I liked um, Joel McHale showing up in that scene. <gasps> I had I no love clue him. he was in the movie. Oh, I, th- I didn't know he was in the movie, but no. I didn't know who he was until I watched Community. So yeah, I hadn't. It kind of went over Community my head. Community when I watched the movie. Last. Yeah, no, it went over my head completely, and I was like, "Oh, it's that guy. He's in this film." <laughs> nice little cameo from yeah. him. <laughs> yeah, still like J. Jonah Jameson in this, uh, played by J.K. Simmons. He's exactly he's the same. Like, and he he's gets great. the Spider-Man suit. You know, presents it on his wall. <laughs> okay. And then when he steals it back, yeah, so, yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah he's like, he maybe he was Spider Man's dead. He's yeah. like, he was, he was a great man. <laughs> maybe he was a hero after all. Yeah. I just couldn't see it. And yeah, and then he yeah. steals the suit, and he's like, he's a, he's thief. a thief. <laughs> he's a menace. <laughs> I want Spider Man. That yeah. is such on point for his character. So isn't it? funny. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Oh, how he makes us laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, should we go on to ratings? Yeah, sure. Yeah. What should we rate this out of? Pizza time. Pizza time. <laughs> well, it yeah. had to be, didn't it? Of course it had to be. Mm. This is a really, really great movie. Just a ton of fun. Obviously the MJ, Peter stuff still sucks, but everything else in the movie is just so great and so entertaining that I can look past that. I'm going to give it nine pizza times out of ten. Really love this movie. Mm. feel bad for John. Old astronaut John getting yeah. stood up by MJ. God damn it. <laughs> so good. It's so good. Um, I think, yeah. The, the, the thing with the, like this, this marathon that we did, I wanted my opinions to change a bit. But like with every movie that we watched, it was like, that's how I remember it being. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there was no point in me watching these movies. I do really like them, though. So it's always a fun time. I'll give Spider-Man 2 eight pizza times. Out of ten, um, as I kind of said before, it's um, it's it's enjoyable and it's just as good as the first movie, in my opinion. So eight pizza times out of ten. Spider Man, Spider Man, <laughs> Scooby Dooby Doo, Spider Man. Oh, <laughs> what's next, Darcy? Uh, <coughs> quite possibly the best of the three. <laughs> we have no. Sp- <laughs> hey, don't 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 ruin it yet, don't guys. Don't knock until you try, man. Yeah. Um. Spider-Man 3, um, obviously directed by Sam Raimi because he's done all three, uh, came out in 2007. I like how this one's tagged or taglined, The Battle Within. 
Yeah. I'm lame, first off. <laughs> um, and it's about... Um, it makes sense. It's not to do with the movie itself, but like yeah. the battle within Sony and Sam Raimi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, that, that's exactly what it um, prefaces. Um, that story is more interesting. It's a whole allegory movie. about Sony and yeah. Sam Raimi. Um, well, essentially, it's about um, Spider-Man and how he has to go up against three villains in this movie. So it's quite a hefty little chunker of a film. And basically, um, how it's it's just about himself and how he becomes like a massive emo. Um, <laughs> I get, I guess it's one of those that you just um, he's in a love triangle. There's basically what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of things that happen in this movie, and it is clunky. Do we yeah. agree? Yeah, you got yeah. Sandman there, who's like this ex-con. He's escaped from jail. He gets the sand powers. You got Venom, who goes on the Spider-Man suit and he crashes down next to Peter Parker for some reason from space <clears throat> yep and he's like I'm gonna be Spider-Man now and then Venom is Spider-Man <laughs> and then also Harry's like oh, I still hate uh, Spider-Man you, I hate <laughs> Spider-Man so much <laughs> but they need to take him out of it for a bit so they give him a bit of amnesia <laughs> he's out of the picture for a little bit while Wait, they so establish the other plots in this movie I was gonna say what whilst we're on this whole amnesia bit how hilarious was the scene that that happened in? Yeah, what were they fighting? Yeah, <laughs> worst quite possibly, fight yeah. scene in these movies. Yeah. <laughs> quite possibly the worst. the worst thing on. It looks terrible as well. That's, I don't, I can't stop laughing because this film is just like. I feel like it's laughable for all the wrong reasons. Some of it is genuinely funny, and some of it is funny because it's really shit. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I wanted from this movie, but like I didn't get that. Yeah, I, I wanted it to be like a kind of so bad that it's good movie. And for the record, I think there's parts of this movie to like, but mostly I was just very bored. I think it's too long. I think it's it too, too muddled. Long. I think there's too much going on for the movie itself to handle. I, it's I, I just really wanted it to be over. I yeah. genuinely don't know why. I'm sorry, Chris. I genuinely don't know why they decided to put three villains in one movie it just it's just yeah. too much it's just a massive mess because yeah. like they've put so much in the movie and they don't have enough time to really develop anything so it just kind of feels like a lot of pointless scenes and padding where they just don't even try to develop what they have yeah what does peter learn nothing <laughs> there is no morals or like anything in this movie yeah, this... like that's something you can say about both the previous two movies like the character has like a clear arc and there's like there's learned something mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. He's, he's grown as a person but in this movie he's basically back where he was when the film began yeah i feel like this film could have not happened and it would have come out exactly the same way if that makes sense john you know like yeah, at least with the other two, there was some sort of progression. There was like um, additions to the character and stuff. But this film was just like, I'm going to have a midlife crisis at the age of, what, 18? Is he meant to be 19? I don't fucking know. 23? Like, <laughs> yeah. What is going on here? And why yeah. is it happening? The only thing really that this film has to offer is the conclusion to Harry's plot. Oh, yeah. yeah good point. Because he dies. And Even then they kind it. of fridge him for a bit. Yeah. We don't need to deal with this guy for a little bit. Let's watch Spider-Man fight Sam now. They do that a street. couple of times, though. Like, obviously, he gets amnesia, and like you don't see him for a while because he doesn't know what's happening. Mm -hmm. And then he remembers everything, and then Peter Parker like blows him up, and you don't <laughs> see him for like another half hour. Yeah, but that was cool. <laughs> it was cool, but like, there's like, no way he survived that. No. And they have that fight with Emo Parker and <laughs> Harry in the in the goblin lair, and then Harry's like, "Oh, you killed my father." He's like, "I'm gonna turn, so I have to teach you this lesson, old man." And then he throws the grenade at Peter, and he doesn't even look; he just like slings the grenade back at him. Oh, it's so yeah, cool! That's the best fight scene in the film. <laughs> it was awesome. He should have died, though. Yeah, <laughs> there's no way that could have gone off like the... right next to his face, and he survived. Yeah. I don't know how that works. And the thing is, it's like. Okay, maybe um, they didn't show it, or they didn't see it, or they didn't feel the need to. But if one side of his face is fucked up, wouldn't pu wouldn't most of his left side be fucked up as well? Or did they just kind of go? Do you know what? Don't worry. We only have to we only have to do the face. No, he's all right. 
Didn't well, he put his hand over his face for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just didn't understand. Yeah, I just didn't understand that. Is his scars healed up pretty fast? <laughs> they did. He wasn't even bloody. He literally no. just looked scarred. Yeah. <laughs> it was so funny. Not even like kind a of Phantom more. of the Opera thing going on. Yeah, <clears throat> it was very like almost Two Face kind of thing going on. I know that's yeah. Batman, isn't it? But it kind of had that sort of like feel to it. Yeah, I just. <laughs> I don't know why they bothered. Yeah, it didn't make him any better. I still hate Harry a lot. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I just don't enjoy Honestly. him as a character. I just think he's a whingy little baby. Although, I don't know, I just felt like he was really annoying in this film as well, especially when mm. he got um, the amnesia and he comes back and he's like, oh, look at my house. I'm not doing too bad for money, am I? And I'm like, oh, shut uh, up, yeah. little crayon. I wakes up, he's like smiling. He's like... <laughs> My dad's dead, right? <laughs> it's the bit where yeah, Peter's man, like, sorry. See, he always looks like he's smiling yeah. or laughing, even when he's having a bad time. He's like, <laughs> MJ just dumped me, and he looks like he's about yeah. to laugh. Yeah. <laughs> or in that coffee shop. <laughs> I don't know what I did. <laughs> Women, am I right? <laughs> I really like Dan Tony McGuire in the previous two movies, but I actually think he's really bad in this movie. <laughs> he's like super blank and like monotonous for most of it. And then when he's like doing the whole emo thing, he's just like just flat out terrible. Yeah, but doesn't that say um, quite a lot about um, like the terrible writing maybe of the film? Because obviously he was okay. What happened to my voice? There? I think he the... was okay in the first two films, so it must be something about this film that just <laughs> wasn't. I it. think Sam Raimi didn't really try because I know he he didn't, didn't want to like do it, the movie he? he's come out and said that he hated the entire experience he was heavily like pressured and controlled by sony so i feel like he probably just didn't put any effort into even trying it's quite sad actually it's, it's because sad. it could have been a great trilogy of films and don't get me wrong there are parts of this film could have been a good quadrilogy of films you wanted to make a fourth one you wanted to make a fourth one? Oh yeah. hell yeah the well, only reason they didn't do another one was because of Sony Ben his relationship, mm. I think. He should have just gone to a different... Oh, no, he can't do that, can he? Because they probably own the rights to yeah, the film. Yeah, Sony owned the rights God to God damn, I was going to be like, oh, they should have just gone to yeah. a different distribution. That's why they then did Amazing Spider-Man, because I think all the cast refused to do another one without Sam Raimi. And that was their first mistake. Yeah. Let me just put it out there. And then they ended that series because... Um, Andrew Garfield uh, Mr. Cool or something ridiculous oh and wow. he did, uh, d and is um... yeah, he's like 15 20 minutes late to like a a conference call or something <laughs> and they fired him is, oh um, my god is the one with Tom Holland by Sony as well yeah, yeah. oh okay they're, they're, yeah they own the rights to the character of Spider-Man yeah they're like leasing him out to Marvel so I think Oh, okay. Marvel got, yeah. still make the movies, but Sony are kind of in charge of them. So oh. you don't see the Spider-Man movies on Disney Plus. Oh, okay, them. right. I got you. They are on Netflix, though. Yeah, they, they're there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. I think Harry Good kind of looks like he's on drugs the entire time. Yeah, he does. He looks super weird, just like always, like on edge. Who? Which know. one? Harry. To be fair, oh, knowing man. James Franco wouldn't even surprise me if he was on drugs the whole time. No, he seems <laughs> like that kind of. He is that kind of person. Mm -hmm. I didn't yeah. say it, but you did. <laughs> I don't know. He's like trying to break up MJ and Peter. He's like, I'll... He <laughs> gets that, <laughs> like, uh, that, that from beyond the grave call from his father. And he's like, you have to go for his heart. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, I'm going to make MJ break up with Peter. And... <laughs> Then I'll be awesome. <laughs> okay. Since you know, per yeah, I felt like uh, it was it was, like <laughs> it didn't really do anything, did it? It was just like oh, he broke up. He got them to I don't know. Just what happened? What came of that? What really came hmm. of that? He turned Eva. Yeah. That's yeah. That's it. And then you got that great scene where he starts dancing because he bought himself a suit. Brilliant. <laughs> great. Yeah, <'cause> he's <laughs> thrilled because he of the power of venom. He's wearing um I do like the Spider Man yeah, suit the entire his time. Spider -Man suit. <laughs> it's like haha. -ha. It's always under my it's like Superman and like tears off his clothes. He's like, I'm actually Spider Man. I think it's really funny also how he like constantly touches his chest like, oh just making sure it's still here. <laughs> so Venom's got his back. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, and then Max brought up the great um the great question of 
Oh yeah. If he can't so take like, off his suit, how does he? <laughs> so like Venom won't. <laughs> Venom, it's very clearly established that he's, it won't let itself be taken off easily. Yeah. So like, <laughs> how does he go to the toilet? <laughs> does it open up a a small hole for his bum hole? Yeah, like, I feel. Like, <laughs> I feel like these are good questions though. They're like questions. These are no the one questions asks. that need to be asked. It's so true. How does Peter Parker shit <laughs> when he's wearing the Venom suit? <laughs> we just. We want to know. <laughs> hmm. We haven't even mentioned like Topher Grace and Bryce Dallas Howard. Okay, right. So I actually prefer this guy being Eddie than Tom Hardy. Yeah, he fits the character more. The only He's problem is like an actual loser. And that's I what still don't like him. No, he sucks. Yeah, like yeah, I think he sucks in the movie. And the problem is, I really like the character of like Venom, but I don't. I don't really like how anyone's really portrayed him no, or them. No. Or He's not been good whatever. in any film. I don't get it. Like, I think Tom Hardy is a terrible choice for Venom. And don't get me wrong, I love Tom Hardy. He's a great actor, but I don't think he I is I think Eddie. Tom Hardy is a great choice for Venom. I don't think he's a good choice for Eddie Brock. Okay, there we go. Okay, okay yeah. fair enough. And the voice that he makes for Venom as well, that's another story in it. That's just mm-hmm. fucking garbage. That's the only thing I liked about this Venom was that he didn't put on that like really awful voice. He didn't put on any voice. Yeah, that's what I liked about it. Venom was was like nothing. It was good. I preferred that. It was just like, it wasn't even a personality. It was just like a thing. It was a plot device. I don't like that at all. Okay. Because it's like, oh, they don't even, do they even call it Venom? I don't know. You're just supposed to know. I don't think they do actually. No. It's no, just this black glob that falls from the sky, and yeah. that's it. And I guess the uh, I guess what um also kind of takes away from that is that Peter Parker knows that it's Eddie, so like he just calls him Eddie instead of Venom. <laughs> so is he actually Venom, or is he just Eddie in a black Spider Man suit? No, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? It's like I like being bad. <laughs> that <laughs> it was makes bit, me happy. That was a bit cringy. I'm not gonna lie. Bryce Dallas Howard also. Just like really pointless in the film. Yeah. I recognise that. Plays um, Gwen Stacy, who's yeah. like was the first like Spider Man love interest. Like in the original comics, that was basically what Mary Jane was. So I'm it's so- like really weird that they've just like kind of added her in- added her <laughs> in as like film. an adult yeah. in this movie. It's almost like they were just like, we need a love interest. There's a name that people know, and she's going out with Eddie Brock. Yeah. Why do they do, do they like? Do we see them together ever? No, not really. And do you know what's even like? Right, so in one of those scenes where like Gwen Stacy's like literally about to plummet to her death, he's just taking pictures yeah. of her down at the bottom, going, "Oh, I'm dating your daughter, by the way." But he doesn't <laughs> seem to care that she's about to die. Look who it is up there. It's uh... <laughs> that's my girlfriend up there. Yeah, like hey, babe. Who reacts like that? Uh, Would you not be I'm worried? Just he's just like whatever. <laughs> that's so stupid. Don't mind me. What a pleb. Yeah, he's a, bit, he's a bit shit as well, to be honest. But I feel like if Eddie Brock is meant to be like this massive loser, then I feel like it works well in this film compared to actual Venom, like the films. I don't know. I need to stick up for Venom, you know. <laughs> oh my God. I, just, fil- I don't like anything they do with the character in this, no, like I, really at all. It's really sad as well because I love Venom and I think they could have done something really cool. But no one's ever done it yet. No oh. one has done a good Venom yet. And I would like someone to uh, it's annoying. fix that, <laughs> to be honest. I wish they would. I wish they just never made the uh, the films at all and just let me use my imagination for these things. Mm. Let's talk about something good, though. As in Sandman. Yeah. He's Sandman was villain. great. Yeah, well, we're focusing on t- too many of the shit ones. We're not focusing on Sandman. The so, cool I'm... geezer. I hate how they retcon um, Uncle Ben's killer to be him. That's a <laughs> really, really dumb, terrible idea. But Shaking I do head. really like Sandman's like backstory and how he's like he's just a guy who's like kind of made some mistakes and like has ended up in this world of crime, and all he wants is to give his daughter a good life. And now he's a massive Sam monster. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you feel quite bad for him. To I be do honest. feel bad for him. Yeah. I really loved the transformation sequence as well, um, where he like 
first turns into Sandman, where he's like in this huge pit of sand and it's like slowly coming out as like a person and it's like struggling to pick up this little lo- mm. lock. It's like really, really great scene. Probably the best bit of CGI in the film. It's probably be the best. Scene I think it's the, the best film. scene in the film. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's like good. it's really hard to do like that, that kind of like molecular type of CGI with like the sand. Yeah. Especially back in like 2007. It looks really good, honestly. It does. Yeah. Especially with sand. Like, yeah. it's not even like an easy, like, material, or, like a scene to try and make. You're literally, what, millions of grains of sand that you're trying yeah. to make up there? There's also something kind of emotional about it, about him, like, trying to pick up this little picture of and his he can't daughter do it. and he can't do it. <laughs> Although he does it pretty bloody quickly because he seems to find the strength to become more solid. Makes his hand more dense. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's it. Dense. I couldn't think of the word. He's just solid. <laughs> Obviously, I wish Sandman was developed far more, but I like what they do with him in the film. Pretty sure he should have been, because that's what Sam Raimi wanted to do. And yeah. He didn't what, want Venom in there. Man. He just wanted to do Sandman. Yeah. I don't... It would have been far better movie if it was just him. I don't know why. They... Like, at a push, I think they could have had a bit of a sideline story with, um, you know, wrapping up Harry's character or whatever. Venom didn't need to be there. Like, as much as I like the geezer, he didn't need to be there. The whole Eddie Brock thing didn't have to happen. Gwen Stacy didn't have to be there. There's and it just makes a lot the of movie just longer. Yeah, there's yeah. just a lot of things about this film that just didn't need to happen. They could have just developed on the better parts of the film instead of stretching it out so thin. I don't know if I really like the character of Sandman in this because I feel he, he, where he should have got more development, I feel like he was sidelined and we didn't get as much of him yeah, as I would no, have liked to. the problem I have with you know, Maybe he could have been a good character. But I didn't feel like he was. It was just like, he got done you know, a bit dirty, didn't he? Yeah, he's like, oh, I'm, I'm sand now. Even though I should have killed him. Should have killed him L- when he was in there. Literally, how was he All that sand like, going into him. It should have murdered him. <laughs> should have been torn to pieces. But no, he's just Sandman now. And um, then, I don't know, Just he fights Spider-Man a couple of times and then Spider-Man forgives him. And that's about it. Yeah. And then he... Does he go back to his family in the end? No, we don't like know. he dissolves. Does he die or does he just like disappear into the wind? Like, he I'm becomes confused. a tornado and just yeah, goes does, away. Yeah, does he? He's like, yeah, does he die? Or does Pete he... for no, he doesn't die. Oh, just goes somewhere. It was established else. before that he could turn into like a tornado. Oh right. So, but, and, yeah, like, I, thought, around, I thought he died at the Go end, around New York. Like... Oh, okay. But then, cool. like, does, is he able to see his daughter again? Is his name cleared? Is he going to be okay? We don't know. None of that is developed. It just ends. Yeah. He's never like, yeah, he's never like acquitted or anything, or he's, yeah, he's just like, I am sand, mm. goodbye. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so stupid. Oh, God. It's funny how Willem Dafoe's like in all of these. Even though he dies in the first one, he's still in all of them. Yeah. And it's still the best part of it. Every time he comes back, it's like such a great moment, I think. Yeah, he is really good in all three of them. Something I can't believe we've not brought up yet is the CGI in the movie. Like, the film uses, like, very little practical effects compared to the previous two movies. A lot of it is all CGI based, and it looks so bad. A lot it of it does look terrible. <laughs> aged terribly. Yeah. It looks like a video game all throughout. Maybe it was like a push to um get it done sooner, or like... In- because you've got like all these villains you need to accommodate for, like there's not enough time to make more practical effects or models with these things. It does feel very studio fronted, yeah, I think, have, more yeah. so than it than the the first two, which I felt were very much in Sam Raimi's sort of wheelhouse. Like, yeah, this is a Sam Raimi movie we're watching. But with this, you know, he's still di- he's still directing it, so it's not complete shit. But I don't feel like it's his movie. I kind of, no. I kind of feel like it could be like a budget thing as well. Like, think about what your budget probably was back in two thousand and seven or whatever, and then remember how many characters they've got, how much like stuff they've got to use. Like, they probably used most of the budget on that scene of Sandman becoming Sandman. To be honest, like probably, just, like I said, they just didn't need to do all three in one film. Why? No. I also why. don't think the action sequences are that great. Something really that like, I find that entertaining or fun, like especially like 
compared to the previous two movies where pretty much every single action scene was a lot of fun and really well choreographed and directed. I can't mm. really comment. I don't really like action based things. Yeah. So I'm like gonna I'm not gonna point that out. Don't really like action, so I, I genuinely don't, but that's uh, when people enjoy these kind of like things, I'm always just like, I kind of take the film more on like what happens around it more than like those actual scenes because I just don't care. Just doesn't thrill me. It depends on how it works within yeah. the story for me. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. That. Yeah. That's kind kind of, but I just don't enjoy it no matter what. Really. I don't know. I, I could watch like The Raid Two or something, which is a fine movie. I think. It's all like action. The action choreography is really good, but like I don't care about the story that's going on in that movie. <laughs> okay. So like it's just it's just watching fights, you know. And with this, it's like it not only does it have like a story I don't care about, but the fights suck and yeah. the choreography is bad, <laughs> and, and nothing happens that I feel like I can attach to. You know, there's like a part where um, is it like I I kind of like the fact that Peter's kind of going after Sam and he's like he killed my uncle. Now I gotta kill him. And there's like a point where he thinks he's killed him, so he tells Aunt May, yeah, he he died, Spider-Man killed him. And she says, Spider-Man doesn't kill people. There's like one of the few moments in this movie where it was actually like any good whatsoever. It was, yeah. it was a really nice moment. And it does encapsulate the character very well of Spider-Man and what he stands for. Because even as, as most... Uh, upset the, the, the as most like as much as he wants to take revenge on someone no he doesn't kill people and that's a good thing to like tether the character it's a lot to do with like that's why people like batman that's why people like daredevil you know these these are people who are heroes for a reason and that they overcome their own personal biases in in the face of something that they'd rather perhaps they would rather kill someone who done them wrong but like the the ability to confront that is what makes them a hero yeah 100 percent. do we have anything else to add i think it's fucking horrendous of um peter to take when stacy to the place where mj works yeah, yeah. just a dancer around in front of her i thought that was absolutely horrendous of him that was such a horrible moment. To be honest, that that is the point where I thought Peter and MJ kind of deserve each other, don't they? Like they're just mm. so shitty, <laughs> such shitty people. Mutually destructive people. Mm. Yeah, that seems. <laughs> Wasn't was my fault. It was the venom. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but like he kisses Gwen Stacy upside down. She's like, I can't believe you did that. It's like pff. I also You're like to fact- kiss anyone you like, though. So. I also like the fact that he um. He kind of, oh yeah, he was like kissing her as like Spider Man or whatever, and then had the, the just had the audacity to be like, "Oh, Mary Jane, what's wrong?" As if yeah. like he didn't just do something really bad. She did the same <laughs> thing in the last movie. She kissed John upside down. He, 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 she was like, "Will you lie down for me, John?" And he'd be like, oh, "Okay, this is pretty weird, but I'll do it." <laughs> and then she kisses him upside down on the sofa, and it's like, "Okay, yeah, well, that's that." Yeah, true, but they weren't together then, so it was kind of... Mm. I don't know, it just really annoyed me, because I was like, why would you do that? Like, If he's such a man of morality, why would he do that? I agree. He's quite clearly an idiot not to realise that kissing Gwen was a bad decision. So odd. And then he's like, I'm going to go propose to my girlfriend. (laughs) It's like, what? (laughs) Or the bit where she's breaking out of him, and he's like, we can fix this, let's get Mm. married. And she's like... Oh fucking yeah. hell! <laughs> oh, sorry, Peter. You don't have a job. You you're struggling to pay rent. You, you you're at school right now. What you want to want to propose to her? You want to get married now? <laughs> you want to be you're able to afford idiot, a man. wedding? This, this dude is bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> he's always got this stupid smile on his face. Like what, <laughs> has no idea what the hell he's doing the Which, entire time. Even when time. he's crying, he looks yeah. like he's smiling, and I, I just I love it because it's just so on brand for Tobey <laughs> Maguire to have like. The most weird facial expression. Mm. Oh, God. <laughs> now dig on this. We're going to go to ratings. Yeah. <laughs> what are we going to rate this out of? We'll do it out of... Um, um, we'll, do, we'll do it out of... I'm going to put some dirt in your eye. No, no, fuck. You remember that French guy who was like the discount French David Arquette? He was like, oh, I love it, romance. I am French. <laughs> Do it out of I am Frenches. 
<laughs> um, yeah, this film kind of sucks. It's just <laughs> like a huge step down from the previous two movies. You can really tell that this isn't a film that anyone involved like had any interest or heart in. It's just very controlled and very manufactured. And it just isn't a fun movie. I'm going to give it four, what was it? I am French. Four I am French out of ten. <laughs> oh, so stupid, yeah. Four I am French is out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the only thing I can say about this film is that I did, I, I enjoyed it for all the wrong reasons. So I actually, <laughs> I'm going to give it six I am French out of ten. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> I would nice. say that's quite high. I should probably change it to five, but I won't. Nah, that's fine. <laughs> awesome. There's Spider Man for you. The, the Raimi ones. Can only hope that they get as good as that in the next Spider Man one they do, but probably not. Yeah, we're going to do a little bonus episode at some point next week mm -hmm. on the new Spider Man um, home one, whatever the, whatever the fuck they've called that one. I don't even know what it's called, to be honest. I don't know. Whatever. Isn't it like No Way Home? Yes. Yeah, that one. I just get confused. I'm far like, From Home and No Way Home. Is it Far From Home? Yeah, Far From Home and No Way Home. Yeah, no, 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 that's already home. done. <laughs> yeah, it's just confusing. Yeah. But until then, uh, we've got a Christmas episode in the next one. Although, I say until then, this is probably going to come out after that one. M maybe, you think? I reckon this it will. This going to come out on the 24th of December. <laughs> going to be a little longer of a wait yeah i imagine the spider-man one the um no way home probably come out before that if yeah, you see it yeah. so we'll do that and um, we'll, we'll just see whatever so we got christmas well, christmas is next yeah. christmas episode on christmas eve is coming out very festive yes very on, coming out on the 24th of december you've given the people what they want <laughs> And we're just going to recommend, you know, Christmas movies to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Take it away, Chris. Yeah. So um, Darcy had a go at me when I <laughs> said I wanted to pick this movie. Cause she was like, it's not a Christmas movie because um, I picked it just because it's set at Christmas. Mm. But I think it is a Christmas movie. It's not a very festive one, but it is one. It's one of my favourite movies of all time. I'm really excited for you guys to watch it because I know neither of you have seen it. My pick is Brazil, directed by Terry Gilliam. Yes! Nice. Yeah, I've been meaning to watch that for ages. Sorry, I was looking up my movie because I don't know who directs it. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. I've gone well, for an absolute classic. I watch it every year. Yeah, just Love skipping actually. over Max. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I'm, I'm Go going Go ahead, first, Darcy. Then. Whatever. Yeah, Love Actually from 2003. Never nice. seen it. I've got that on DVD. Actually. It's one of the greatest films. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, Go on, my next. pick. I, I've had this on Blu-ray for a while and I've been waiting for the, the perfect moment to watch it. Um, it's supposed to be all right, I think. But um, yeah, I'm excited for it. Uh, I think it's a Christmas movie. I th I'm pretty sure. I haven't read like too much about it, but I'm pretty sure it's a Christmas movie. Uh, it's from 2015. It's directed by Todd Haynes and it's called Carol. Yeah, I was going <gasps> to pick that. Mm -hmm. no, I changed my mind. I really want to watch this Yeah, thing. nice. Yes. And we also have a guest on the next uh, on the Christmas episode. It's my friend Lara, and she has chosen the 1946 movie directed by Frank Capra called It's a Wonderful Life. Nice. Yeah. A we great movie. Mm -hmm. Another film everyone tells me to watch. <laughs> yeah. I've not seen it, actually. No. no. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah it's really TV. great. Nice. Episode 65 is a TV episode. We've got season one of Oz to watch. It's on like HBO and Now TV. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, do that. Social media we've got. We've got all them. We've got YouTube, the Sunday Movie Marathon. Twitter, at Sunday Movie Pod. Facebook, at Sunday Movie Marathon. And Letterboxd, at Sunday MM. Capital S. Capital MM. <laughs> Any final words, guys? <laughs> I knew one of us was going to do it. I liked it with that sound as well. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Bean. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Bean. That was a nice little Mr. He Bean nods. plush yeah. that Chris oh, got shit. me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see you next time. <laughs>
I'm Bean. <laughs> I'm not paying for this. <laughs>